it's Sunday and it's time for your latest instalment of Warrior Mode. Faith, strength and courage. Every Sunday we gather here with the Spiritual Warrior to bring you an absolutely information packed episode of one of the one of the fastest growing podcasts here on YouTube. Very, very pleased with the way things are going here on Warrior Mode. Of course, I'm Kev Baker. I am one of the foresmen, as Travis has dubbed us. And like I say, every week we come here, we bring you some of the best guests to talk to you. We sometimes do our own four-way commentary on some of the hottest topics out there on the planet right now. But today, I think we're about to raise the bar on everything that's gone before just privy to some of the conversation before the show with today's special guest. And already I'm convinced this is going to be epic. So with less from me and more from these guys, let me go to Derek first of all. How you doing, brother? I'm doing well. Thank you. And um, I appreciate the awesome intro as always, Kev. You are fabulous. Uh, you're the best in the business as far as I'm concerned. And um, <laughs> okay, I heard that okay, chuckle. Okay, okay. I heard that chuckle. All right. Look, I'm being serious. All right. <laughs> you uh, you do well. You do um, a, a, above well as far as I'm concerned. You're just the best. And like I said, um, I appreciate you, everything you provide. Uh, to the Warrior Mode show with, with Bill Bean as our leader. Uh, like you said, the, the Forsman, as uh, Travis has dubbed us. Um, and it's just just great to be here. We have a great, a phenomenal guest tonight. Like you said, uh, top tier. He would probably beg to differ, but I'll let him uh, explain all that when he um, actually is introduced. Um, but yeah, I, I'm, I'm doing fabulous, man. Um, like I do on the weekends, I spend a lot of time with my daughter. We we went uh, a couple different places uh, this weekend so far. We have our um, daddy-daughter uh, lunches and brunches and things of that nature. And um, cool. uh, her name is Leah, and I love her. And, uh, it's just Hi, been, Leah. It's just been, uh, and I know you guys see her all over social media. She grew up on social media like a lot of people and children do these days. So um, just happy to be here. Happy um, to be a part of this fabulous show with this this guest who we spoke with pre-show. Who um, we could have kept going pre-show, you guys, and you guys <laughs> were like, "When are they coming on? When are they coming on?" We were ready, and then we were on time as well, just for you guys out there. So um, yeah, thanks for um, the introduction, Kev, and uh, uh, looking forward to the show. No, it's going to be a doozy. What do you think, Travis? You looking forward to it? Look how cool you look today, dude. I don't know, man. <laughs> I got a nice tan this week. I did a three-hour remote on uh, Wednesday, so I got nice and toasted. So I'm, I'm I'm sporting the tan and the shade, stealing Strowman style as always on a Sunday night. No, I am psyched about this show. It's been a great weekend already, and I you know Sunday night really rounds out the week for me, and we get things kicked off for a whole new week. Yeah, so, it's going to be a really good show, and uh, while we're just about to go to the Spiritual Warrior. If you take a couple of seconds to click like, click share, and get as many people over here as you can. So, Bill, how's your week been? And, of course, I'm going to give it over to you now to say the opening blessing, and then we'll get Travis to bring in the guests. So how's your week been, Bill? Uh, busy as usual. It's been good, but it's been busy. There's no shortage of uh, people in need, that's for sure. So, but everything is good, everything is blessed, and we're going one way, and that is forward. So, we praise God for it. I'm very excited uh, to have our guest uh, on this evening, and um, I think this will definitely, uh, uh, to steal a word from you, Kev, be epic for sure. So, uh, without further ado, we'll, we'll start uh, everything off as we normally do with a prayer, and then we'll let Travis bring our awesome guest in. And Father, we thank you and praise you for this blessed and appointed time. And we ask that you speak through us to speak truth. And we ask that you work through us to be a blessing to everyone that is involved in this right now. And Father, I ask that you keep all of these people in your hedge protection 24 hours a day, seven days a week for life. And I ask that you bless them 
with an abundance of love, peace, joy, good health, and prosperity for life. We give you the praise and the thanks and the glory, Father, for everything forevermore in Jesus' name. All right, Travis. Give me just one second, gentlemen. I've sent that through to you now, Trav. Got it, sir. Thank you very much. I apologize, Bill. I'm not part of the thread on uh, Skype tonight. I'm using a different... Uh, oh, laptop. that's right. Yeah. So I did not have it. So but now, now that I've got it, now that I've got it, thanks to Kev's magic fingers. Yes. Our guest tonight is Dave Schrader. He's a longtime radio show host that delves deep into the realms of the strange, the fringe, and the bizarre in the paranormal field. Recently, Dave Schrader has been featured as the lead paranormal investigator on Travel Channel's hit TV series, The Hosier Files. Dave and co-host Tim Dennis started off with Darkness Radio in 2006, which grew into a widely popular radio show. He became a regular fill-in host for George Norrie on Coast to Coast AM that is heard worldwide with millions of listeners. He's the famous host of Midnight in the Desert, started by the radio legend Art Bell on Dark Matter Digital Network. Currently, he's hosting Darkness Radio Presents, Beyond the Darkness Podcast, and True Crime Tuesday on Patreon. Dave co-wrote the book Other Side, A Teen's Guide to Ghost Hunting and the Paranormal, was the lead judge on the Travel Channel hit miniseries Paranormal Challenge, and has appeared on Travel Channel's number one series Ghost Adventures eight times and Paranormal State on A&E an episode of Travel Channel's Haunted Hospital, and lead investigator on the Travel Channel's The Hosier Files. And wow. is also in the Stranger Than Fiction Part 2 book as well. So he's featured in there also. Dave, welcome to Warrior <laughs> Mode, man. Um, wow, so glad to have you here. I got to say, that is a great accent. Are you from Wisconsin? Well, yeah, just outside. <laughs> just outside of it in Glasgow. Yeah, yeah. Not, not far just off. Just a wee bit of, uh, away from there. Gla Glasgow's right in that triangle between Iowa, Minnesota, and Wisconsin. Uh, trust I'm, me, Dave, you're I'm not, not actually, always good at geography. You're not far wrong. This is like the Bermuda Triangle here, I'm telling That's true. you. If you're looking for cryptids, all you've got to do is walk down the high street at midnight, any night, and you'll find plenty. But listen, um, Dave, <laughs> let me ask you, how mm -hmm. did you come to be the guy that sits here with us today, hosted coast to coast from the holes or files? How did you end up getting into all of this? Well, uh, the reason I'm here tonight is because Bill Bean has some horrible pictures of me from a porn I did in 1977 and threatened to release them if I didn't come on tonight. Um, That's right. <laughs> yes, it, uh, I, you know, I just, I, I've lived in a life steeped in the supernatural with paranormal experiences around me my whole life and existence and a passion for radio and was able to marry those two together in 2006, launching Darkness Radio, and we've been on the air ever since, and that has opened up many doors and many opportunities to travel the world, meet great people, uh, see some of the most haunted locations, and, and get a chance to investigate. So that's kind of the short version. Wow. So where do we even start with this? Derek, you must be sitting on the edge of your chair, ready to go. Well, uh, well, I'm, I'm literally, uh, you can't see me here. I'm literally sitting on I the can, edge of my chair. I can chair, actually like, sense you on the <laughs> edge of your chair. Dude. I'm on the edge of my chair right now because I, I, I'm so excited about, about tonight's guest. And um, so it was an honor for me because I was at uh, WCBM Studios for my Speak Your Mind show, in which I invited Bill Bean as a guest. Um uh, due to Ron Savage, and thank you, Ron Savage, uh, for uh, introducing me to Bill Bean. But my show was a late night show, so I I came in. It was an hour show. I came in at, at eleven, and Coast to Coast was the show that came on after. So it's an honor. It's an honor to actually um, you know meet somebody and talk to somebody right now who was such a, a you know a, a major individual in. Um, somebody involved in that show the way that dave was and i don't do you still do that show now dave or, or have you well, moved well, on for, 
first of all, gentlemen, please remember that as one of the former fill-in hosts, my uh, my demands are that you don't make direct eye contact with me during this interview. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a very big <laughs> shot in my house. <laughs> uh, I know, you know, I stepped away from coast to coast, what, gosh, four or five years ago when I was given the opportunity to start uh, hosting Art Bell's final show, Midnight in the Desert. And I stepped away. That became a, a, a pretty big time commitment. Um, so I was doing that five nights a week, then Darkness Radio, two to three times a week, plus our True Crime Tuesday show and filming a TV show. So it just got to the point where it was there was t too much to do and not enough me to go around. Uh, and I know by this svelte frame, you'd think there's plenty of me to go around, but uh, there, there's not. And then I walked away from Midnight in the Desert about a year ago to focus on the TV show and our own uh, Darkness Radio long-running program. So that's that's kind of where we've where we've been with all of this. So what, 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 yeah, sorry, go ahead, go ahead, Cam. Go, no, sorry, go ahead, you're me good, and you Cam, are going to be – it's going to be like an interrogation. I know, we're like, oh, I want to so what, All right, please raise your hand if you have questions and I'll call on you. What's your <laughs> preference? Do you, I mean, I love hosting a show like Coast to Coast. I get on guests that talk about everything. I just love exploring all of these really undercovered topics. But you've mm -hmm. done the boots on the ground stuff. You've been out investigating. I tried my hand at that at Boleskine House. It went horribly wrong. What do you prefer to do? Do you prefer to speak to people that are doing the research or are you a nuts and bolts guy? You like to get out there. I like a little bit of all of it, right? I mean, I started doing the radio show and loved the connection. But then when I'd hear, you know, guests come on, like James Gilliland from the Yaseti Ranch in Charlotte Lake, Washington, claiming on a clear night you have a 90 to 95 percent chance of seeing UFOs or as they're now known, UAPs, unidentified aerial phenomena. I, I had to go. Boots on the ground. You hear this place is so haunted and there's so much going on. How do you not go investigate these claims? So I've always tried to put myself into these positions to see it, not just be a, a passive witness, but to actually go explore. And, you know, my own journey is trying to understand life, death, and what, what happens in between and after. So I, I love doing all of it. The radio is always a comfort because I am a, and I know it sounds weird doing all the things I've done. I'm an introvert and I'm very painfully shy in person one-on-one -on -one. with large groups. I could talk to 25,000 people and be fine when I'm on stage doing so. It's coming off stage and having to talk to one person. I get very uh, overwhelmed. So I, I kind of like the isolation factor of radio, but I've grown to love being around people and, and these things. I just am not good on one-on-one -on -one situations. And I think that's partly because I'm uh, – I know this term is used a lot, but I, I believe I'm kind of empathic. So sometimes being directly in people's um, satellite, you, you get overwhelmed by their energy, their concerns, their anxieties. So that uh, that's something I haven't learned to properly shield myself from. Uh, and I can't find enough aluminum foil to wrap myself in when I'm at conferences. <laughs> Derek's got all of that. <laughs> it's not easy trust me i know i talk about it all the time so but but go on please it's very intriguing well that's it i just I, you know I'm, I'm fascinated by this stuff i i love to get out and you know i'll tell you since we're warrior mode on the show and talking about the power of god and the, uh you know so many people push away the concept of religion when it comes to the supernatural um as a matter of fact when tim and i started our show our station was bought out by a religious channel and we, you know, we're like, well, can we stay on the air? And they're like, you're not really our cup of tea. And my response was, have you read the Bible? Right. You've got uh, you go. all kinds of crazy things happening. Mm -hmm. And, you know, from cryptids to giants to possible UFO to people coming back from the dead to healing and all of this. And he, he kind of they allowed us to continue using their live videos or their live audio streams so we could still put out podcasts. But there's been a big factor of faith and belief for all of this. You know, I remember, um, <laughs> remember when I was a kid, uh, if I lost my key and couldn't get in the house, uh, I was in a whole heap of trouble with my dad and my mom, <laughs> we got locked out of the house one day and mom's like, Oh my God. And we're walking around trying every window. We can't get in. And, uh, my mom's standing there and my dad's due home any minute. We know we're going to be yelled at, you know, for <laughs> being dumb enough to leave the keys inside. And I, in no way do I want to convey my dad as a, an abusive person, but you know, uh, yeah, you want you to have responsibility. Right. Dad's were that so way back then. it was about responsibility. And we locked the door and left our keys inside. So my mom just, I remember her clasping her hands and going, God, I need your help here. 
we have to get into this house. And she reached over and pushed on the window and it slid right up. And then she grabbed yeah. the window inside and slid right up and crawled in through the window, let me in. We shut the windows. And just as we're walking back in, my dad's car drives into the parking lot <laughs> or into the driveway. Um, and that kind of jumps forward to a really interesting story. When I was, uh, gosh, uh, my son's going to be 20, is 22, 23. So it was right after he had been born. Um, we, we bought a beautiful little, um, uh, I'm trying to say Basset Hound. Uh, and we had literally bought it that day. It was crummy weather. It was you know, very close to Christmas and we'd come home and I had forgotten my keys to the house. So my friend had driven us around. So I didn't even think to grab my keys when we left. It's freezing out. Um, we're all waiting and, and I'm like, okay, this is, uh, this is horrible. It's freezing. Snow's coming down. What am I going to do? I'm like, all right, there's only one thing to do. I'm going to go around the back of the house and I'm going to break the glass window to get into my garage. I'll just cardboard it up later. So I get around the back, grab the, one of the stepping stones and I whack hit the window and it just vibrates and stops. I'm like, are you kidding me? So I smack, I hit the window again and the vibrates and just stops. So I drop the, the, the footstep uh, and I look up and I go, okay, God, if you got a better plan for me, I'm willing to listen. And I put my hand on the window and it swung open. Oh, and wow. I thought, oh, you know what? I broke the flange, the little flange that was holding it in. That's all that happens. So I slid it. in the window, ran in, let, let everybody in. And uh, then I went back down. I'm like, I better go secure that window, put some nails in it or something to keep it from swinging open. And I get down there, the window shut and latched and I can't move it from either side. That's what so I'd unlatch it and then swung it open. I'm like, well, that's crazy, but it gets even better. That night, uh, you know, some my son, newborn son, you know, he's only a couple months old. He needs a diaper change. The puppy's whining, so I put the puppy out on our deck. I'm changing the boy, and all of a sudden, I start hearing screeching from outside. The puppy had, because of the depth perception and the snow, walked right off our two-story deck and oh, hit the no. concrete below. So we had this brand new puppy screaming. I go down there, I grab him in a towel. I call the the emergency vet. They're like, get in here. I'm, I have that puppy in my lap. I'm driving the, rawr, 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 the whole way yeah. there. And as I'm sitting at a red light, I just put my hand on the puppy. I'm like, listen, God, I need your help here. Uh, we just got this dog. I don't have money to spend thousands of dollars uh, to have this dog just die at the at the vet. You know, either heal this puppy or release it from this pain. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, the, the puppy just goes quiet and limp in my arms. And I was like, oh, man. And I walk into the vet, and I've got the bundle, and the puppy's head is just hanging there. And I set it on the counter, and the vet gives me that sad, solemn look. And he unwraps, and the dog jumps up. <laughs> and he picks up the dog and he goes, well, let's go test. We're going to go x-ray the dog, everything. And they took the dog in the back and she's like, well, I thought, you know, that dog was screaming. And I'm like, yeah, it was screaming. I don't know what's going on. And the doctor comes back about 15 minutes later and hands me the dog. He goes, there's absolutely nothing wrong with this dog. And there I said, but wow. fell off a two story deck and it was screaming and it was all like bent backwards, like a C it's head was Ooh. back screeching. And he goes, I'm telling you, there's nothing here. And I said, it's interesting. Cause I prayed over this dog on the way in and, uh, prayed that, you know, <laughs> that he would be okay because a, it's going to be devastating to my wife and, and family the B, um, I just don't have all this money to blow on, on vet bills for, you know, what surgery and whatever else is going to take care. And he goes, listen, we're not going to charge you because there's nothing wrong with your dog. We did nothing to help your dog. And I said, well, what do I owe you for the x-rays? He goes, I think God's on your side today. What did you name your dog? And I said, we haven't named him yet. And he goes, I'd call him Lucky if I were you. And we called him Lucky, and that was it. So that was this great moment of healing and prayer that took place when I called upon it, and it was there. So, you know, I've uh, Bill knows I'm a big advocate for prayer and yep. healing. Put those out on our website and on our Facebook and social media all the time because we've seen the power uh, of of prayer and just yeah. how good God's grace can be to us. Wow. Man, I'm glad you shared those stories, brother, because they are uplifting stories. It gives me the chills right now as you're mm -hmm. talking about something like that. And Travis, I know you've got plenty that you want to ask Dave, so I'll shut up and let you uh, ask him some questions. 
Well, I, I don't want to interrupt, you know, Derek and, and Kev going all full force fanboy. And like, you know, early. We've we done it early, dude. We went early. <laughs> we started early. Yes, we did. I can't I believe you shamed us. Come on, man. I know. Dad, go on, Charles. Oh, come on. Come on. You know I'm only giving you grief. No, uh, Dave, first of all, uh, a pleasure to, 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 to meet you in person. And thank, thank you for you. being on the sh Thank you for being on the show tonight. My pleasure. Uh, of course. Bill being a, a, a minister and, and the spiritual warrior and myself having been a, a minister previously, a former minister, what you said speaks to me on, on many levels because as when I was actively involved in ministry, it always amazed me at how many people refused to address the, the paranormal aspect of life and that it didn't have any place in organized religion. So I want to my, – my first question – and depending on how the answer goes, there may be more. But why why do you think that organized religion shuns the supernatural and the par paranormal the way that it does? Because we talk about prayer, we talk about miracles, we talk about, like you right. said, in the, in the Bible, stories of of people coming back from the dead, UAPs, yeah. the giants, yeah. the Nephilim, uh, and even you know the story of, of Christ walking on the water. The disciples thought it was a spirit coming to them. So obviously, there's a belief in in most cultures of of the afterlife interacting with this life. So why is it that organized religion, especially Westernized organized religion, is is so shut off to the idea of the supernatural and the paranormal? All right, I have a twofold answer for this. The first is going to be more cynical. The other one is more uh, open. The cynical side of me says a lot of the religious uh, factions stray away from it because it opens up questions of something that's not in their control. They want you to come to church to have the divine moments. They want you, they, they want to control how these things unfold for you. Um, but what they forget is that as humans, we're naturally inquisitive. We want and we demand to know more. Uh, I, I see that in um, the new rise of spirituality that began in 2001, right after 9-11, right? For, for record numbers of people returned to church. And a lot, and I, I went to church to church as well to see what these different religious leaders had to say about what happened to our country, to our world. And they would address 10 minutes of it at the beginning of the sermon. And, and then sadly you could see the money uh, symbols in their eyes of then the, it turned into a whole tithing conversation. And it was no longer answering questions of the divine. It was why you owe us money for being here, for getting the word of God. And, and understand I'm not putting uh, organized religion uh, to task for this. They weren't prepared either. This was huge, but you see all these new people come in, you've got budgets to make, you ask for the money. I get that, but it was the wrong timing. Had they built a substantial base of helping and, and giving some comfort and peace, which is hard to do in a time like that, because what is the right answer for why were we attacked in America? Part of God's plan, pardon me, sounds like Bolsheviks, right? And nobody is going to just buy that at the time. But had there been some more thought, and I watched some really great religious leaders tackle this in interesting ways, trying to answer and quell these fears. But ultimately they turned to uh, money, money, money. And I think that turned a lot of people off. That's why I think since 2001, you've seen people file away from churches and start examining pagan and Wiccan religions and yeah. trying to find answers where they feel more in touch with the world around them as opposed yeah. to the four walls of this church, really? which has happened through history, right? I mean, Christ went into the church uh, kicking over uh, pews and tables and saying, this is not where my father resides, right? Because he knew that they were sh they were shifting the idea of what church was supposed to be, the community of coming together and rejoicing and having this power, as opposed to, um, you know, come in, kneel, stand, sing, sit down, kneel, stand, sing, which became more of a, a cult-like activity as opposed to really connecting with with God and spirit and universe, which I think is a big part of it. So I know that's the cynical side of me, believing that that a lot of times the church does not want you to seek counsel from others because they want you to come seek counsel from them. So mediums, soothsayers are all, you know, witches and crimes and, and you, you know, crimes against God you should stay away from. So I, you know, I think that's more of the cynical nature. Then the other side of me says, because their leadership has not been strong. So 
they have not been trained in dealing with the supernatural. I have talked to pastors who have referred people to me that have said, Dave, I don't know how to deal with this. And I'm like, well, what do you mean? Go do a blessing. Well, I can't just go do a blessing. Well, yeah, you can. We have free will. It's in the Bible. Read it, right? Go go and do a blessing for the, well, I have to get permission from this. And I, and that, that bothers me because then what they're saying in permission is they don't know the proper protocols mm-hmm. to handle this. And I have to lean on Reverend Bill Bean or, you know, um, uh, Father Andrew Calder, uh, uh, you know, some of the other religious leaders that I know that are willing to step up and do their part to help out. And, you know, it is what it is. So I think that it's religious, uh, all the different churches need to, to find a, a a way to talk to people without making it dismissive of you must have a mental illness or you're drug addicted or on alcohol, but get to the root of the problem and listen to people and try to help them. And I think that's the big aspect that they just have not been trained in. Now you got to give it to the Roman Catholic church. They stepped up now, you know, before it was exorcists were very few and far between around the world, but they've actually, you know, they've got courses constantly going talking about, building for um, exorcists and building more to deal with the amount of people seeking help and looking for answers and and feeling overwhelmed like they might be demonically uh, riddled. And, and I think that that's a good sign that at least the Catholic Church has taken that a little bit more uh, seriously in, in dealing with those aspects. So it's kind of long-winded answers to to a short question, but I think that's more of what you see. And again, just let me clarify. And I mentioned this before, and then people go post on my show, and they're like, I used to love your show till you turned all against God, and you hate God. I don't hate God at all. I don't hate Christ. I I love my God. I love Jesus, and I've leaned on both in many times of sadness, and I believe that they have been there with me through every dark step of my life when I tried to commit suicide as a teenager, and the gun would clack but not fire. Um you know, and, and I got messages and, and I've been a part of this for a long time and we've advocated for prayer and healing requests on our show uh, and have had unbelievable results from people, uh, true miracles that have occurred. And so I'm, I'm into that, but I also think that there is an inherent flaw with most organized religions and the way they treat their own people and treat others. You know, I had a great leader here in Minnesota that I used to love going to church. He was one of the most dynamic speakers, and he was great at really making you feel like you were part of the story as opposed to being preached at. And then one day uh, they were talking about in the Lutheran religion allowing uh, gay um, pastors, and he went on this 10-minute tirade of hatred towards homosexuals and half the congregation stood up and left and and I stayed through it and went through at the end and I said Todd I'm so disappointed because you know I don't know what bible you've read but Jesus is all about love your neighbor and leave the judging to God and what you did today cost you and your church and that was the last time I I went to that church wow now Derek I know you want to jump in but Bill I have to <laughs> jump in because I've worked with you for years Bill and um, uh-huh. Dave is somebody that you've mentioned to me time and time again. It's yeah. somebody that you've got great respect for. And you, you've Love name checked them a heap of times on the show as well. And now I get it. Now I get yeah. it, Bill. Now I totally yeah. get where you're coming from, man. Um, I and mean, I've listened was, um... to Dave doing shows. I've seen the Dave on the telly. But now I get where you're coming from, Bill. He's the real yeah. deal, right? He is, and and uh, and Derek, uh, I'm sorry, I'll say this real no, quick. I know you want to ask Dave some questions, but uh, he mentioned something about um, some of these pastors and or priests that are, they just don't want to get involved when it comes to uh, performing exorcisms and and trying to help people that are, uh, afflicted. And look, sometimes it is a mental affliction, but in other cases, it is a real and authentic affliction from evil, and it can even bleed into the mental. And this is what the devil wants. He wants to control a person in mind, body, and spirit. But I've, as you know, uh, Kev, I've been flown to churches around the country to help pastors and their families uh, that were under demonic attack. And Dave and I we're together in a place uh, doing a, a TV shoot that uh, we we were in a church 
and doing the shoot and unfortunately and and the pastor a very nice man i really liked him a lot but he told us he told me he told dave and anybody that would listen that he was terrified and he didn't want any parts of anything like that because he was not equipped to deal with things of that nature and it's very sad because this was a good man and i uh, really liked him very kind man and I certainly appreciated him uh, allowing us to use his church. But I suggested to him that he pray about this. And it's just my opinion that if God has called us to be uh, a servant for him and a vessel that he would work through, then ha in my opinion, it has to be in a complete manner. So I couldn't imagine having a calling from God and not being a spiritual warrior. Uh, so what Dave was saying there, uh, I agree with him a hundred percent that, um, and, and this leads to division and confusion. So the devil loves this. So there are, um, 1200 different Christian denominations in America. Um, and they're miles apart when it comes to mm -hmm. theology and belief. These are all versions of. So I have read the Bi Bible many times, cover to cover. I have studied the Bible for years, so I know it very well. But if I were to say to somebody, well, I think this scripture means this, then that person could come back to me and say, well, no, it speaks to me this way. Now we've got a difference. Mm -hmm. And so that person would go and start their own congregation based on their interpretation of, and I would do the same thing. So this is where the devil gets in the details because it is part of a divide and conquer game plan. So uh, I just find it very interesting that, like Dave was saying, throughout these different denominations, uh, you know, in America and throughout the world, it's just by interpretation that people can be trashed and just thrown away and just uh, deemed not fit. And and I've been through this. Travis could attest to that with 700 Club that uh, they, they came and did a feature on me years ago. And it was going to be the greatest thing until they found out that I had all these UFO experiences. And then uh, they trashed me and uh, would not air the episode. And suddenly I became a villain. So mm -hmm. I understand this 100%. So I just, uh, without getting too long-winded on it, I just wanted to uh, say that I concur with Dave and I agree with him 100% these things that he's saying. So uh, go ahead, Derek. Uh, I know you have a lot more for him. Yeah, well, as I look at my um, my question list here, um, I want to kind of prioritize because I think where we're at in this conversation right now is more important to talk about, um, do we think it's kind of unfair by the churches um, um, that they are not more willing to to have these discussions? It seems like we um, we we kind of rely on them because we're you know we're all brought up in some type some type of um, belief system you know uh, whatever you are you know Christian Baptist whatever all the different you know styles of uh, Christian beliefs and, and so on and so forth um, to where we feel as though they should be a little, actually more than a little, a lot of when, when we're in need and we're having these discussions, like you said, Dave, it's, it's, and, and then all of a sudden we start feeling this rejection uh, because of what we're talking about. And um, I think it's what built, well, it's what Bill goes through because a lot of ministers and, and, and a, a lot of these other organizations, they will not accept. They, as soon as he starts talking about what he knows and what he believes, even though he is a, um, you know, a, a minister, a reverend, and a, you know, a priest in his own right, they still don't want to accept what he's talking about. Should or do we or do you, Dave? Do you believe that this is something that? Um, they're just not accepting, and they will never accept. Or is there is there something more there? You know, and you explained it. You did. You touched on it. But I, I think that's where we need to really start tapping into and trying to figure out why they will not break that boundary or cross that threshold into into accepting us and what we have to say because we believe in them. And if they were there, 
to believe in us and to fight for us, do you think they can make a difference? Here's what I think it comes down to. It's it's and this will be a little controversial, but talking about the current state uh, of UFO disclosure and what the what the government is willing to tell us. I think it kind of falls and bear with me on this weird uh, mm-hmm. sure, comparison, sure. but you? you've got you've got something you can't explain. You don't have answers for. Something that could potentially rock religion and all belief systems. Well, sometimes government and religion plays the dad of mommy and or plays the role of mommy and daddy. Mm-hmm. And Derek, I I don't have an answer, but let's face it as children, we don't want that answer from our parents. Yeah. We want we want an answer so the church says, "Oh no, this doesn't happen," or "Yes, this does happen." Catholic Church, right? The po- last two popes, the current pope and the one before him all said, "Hey, it's okay to believe in life on other planets because sure. our God is too good and too powerful and too much of a, an artisan to have created one and stopped, right? Mm-hmm. And and that's great. But a lot of these religious leaders frown on people that can go out and help because it makes them look weaker. It makes them look less effective. And nobody likes to look less effective in these situations. Whereas if we can tell you, oh, it's a mental you know, issue that you're going through, um, that very well may be the case. But sometimes, Derek, sometimes it's somebody looking you in the eyes with compassion and saying, Derek, I hear you. Mm-hmm. And I'm sorry that you're dealing with this affliction. And brother, I'm going to pray for you and with you. Let's join hands. And then right. saying something together, raising the voices together to try. It's setting intention, setting the goal of working together to find an answer. And you know what, Derek, at that end of us holding hands and eye to eye, praying together that your life turns around and that you are shielded and protected, sometimes that, whether it's placebo or real, works for people. And that's all they need to know is to give them that concept. And one thing I'd love to talk to some of these religious leaders about is, you know, defining without undermining people's beliefs, right? I believe I have a demon. And I'll tell people, you can stop right there. You don't have a demon. Well, how do you know? I said, because you think you have a demon. Trust me, if there's a demon involved, you won't have to think Think it's a demon. You're going to know it's a demon. So, but tell me, Derek, why do you believe you have a demon? And I had this woman who tells me the story of she has all these collector's plates on the wall and her great grandmother's collector's plate flew off the wall and shattered. And I said, okay. Yeah, it broke into a million pieces. I'm like, okay. And right. well, it's my grandmother's give favorite me, plate. And I said, okay. More. I said, did it make a pentagram on the floor? No. Did it, did it look like the number 666? No. Did the shards jump up and try to impale you? No. And I said, okay, so we can remove evil. But it was my grandmother's favorite plate. I said, where did your great grandmother get it? Well, she got it from her mother-in-law at their wedding. And what kind of relationship did your great, great grandmother have with her mother-in-law? Oh, she hated her. Okay. So could it be that your great grandmother or great, great grandmother just was giving you a sign of, Hey, let's get rid of this stupid thing now. And she stood back and she's like, Oh, I never thought of that. And I said, we come from a place of fear, fear, false yeah. evidence appearing real. It's your perceptions. Why do you believe it's a demon? Because it unnerved you. Yeah. If it's a demon, that plate would have flung at your head, right? Yeah. Something more violent would have taken place. Otherwise, as I always joke about, what's roll call in hell this morning, right? Lucifer's up there and he's like, all right, everybody, we got to hear it today. Uh, Derek, you go out and start a war in the Middle East. Bill, I need you to go make a reality star the president. And Travis, I want you to go break grandma's plate. Right? Is Travis <laughs> yeah. like the devil's idiot nephew and that's the only right. job? That's the only him? thing he can do? Right. It's why, did, why did I get that role in this particular <laughs> story? <laughs> but I want to know. I'm glad. In the, in the cycle of pictures I see on my screen. But I, you know, I tell people that. And sometimes by making them laugh, breaking that cycle of thought puts them in a better place. And why do you feel threatened? Well, I, I okay, did, did, well, I have three scratches and Bill, I know you and I might differ on some of these concepts, but I tell people, all right, where are your scratches? Oh, they're on my arm. Where did they happen while I was sleeping? Right. Or here and there, I said, okay, do me a favor. And, and I'll tell all of your listeners, and I encourage you guys to try this. Take your hand right now, put it on your arm and scratch. What do you notice? Really just the three fingers hit. The pinky's a corner. It's got no power. The thumb is coming in on the side. 
you're going to get three scratches. That doesn't mean it's demonic. You probably scratched yourself in your sleep. And, and I don't know, correct me if I'm it wrong. It is possible. Correct yeah. me if I'm wrong. But is a demon just going to come up and be like, mm, and just give you three little grazes? Or is he going to gut like it's a fish? Be gouge. It's and, like and what I've said, you know, to uh, people in the past, uh, clients in the past that uh, have had these types of things. And look, I don't downplay it because sometimes people are really attacked. And that's just part of it's like parlor tricks. And if the person isn't doing it in their sleep and then, you know, something does occur in that way. OK, so that's the best you got that you could just mm-hmm. make three scratches. That's it. And that is what I try to say to yeah. my clients is, look, don't be. These are all parlor tricks to get you in that fear based, trauma based way of thinking and living. And then the devil can have his way with you because you're wide open to be manipulated in every right. way. Absolutely, and, and brother. Talking to people, just telling them, hey, you know what? Getting in, and I said, when I say this, I'm, I'm joking with you guys. I'm not dismissive to people when they tell me these stories. It's always about why do you believe what you believe? Let's examine that. Now that we've looked at it from a bigger perspective, instead of the isolationist moment you had alone in your house when this happened, does it really seem as terrifying as you thought, or was it just surprising? Well, you know what? Really, it was surprising. And I said, okay. So if one plate flew off your wall, That's the only thing that's ever happened in your house. I'm going to guess it's not a demon, but keep me a call, you know, reach out to me if anything else goes on and then just do the Lord's prayer or the prayer of Michael, the archangel throughout your house and set that intention to protect your home, to protect your life, protect your loved ones. And, and imagine thorny hedges of protection and thorny barbs around everybody you love to keep them safe from this. And sometimes that just giving them the tools, they don't even need to necessarily go in and shake a sepulcher and, and bless a location. All they need to do is give you the tools to be re-empowered, which is what it's all about, right? Even in the Bible, Jesus says that that which I do, all of you can do through my father, God, right? So you have the ability to cast out these demons. You have the ability to take c- control and protect. But what problem I see, and this is probably why a a lot of religious leaders, a lot of them are doing a job as opposed to believing in the cause that they're hired. And some get jaded. That's not a slam, folks. Just like being a police officer, a lawyer, a doctor, sometimes you get jaded in your work. And these pastors, you know, and and priests and and religious leaders, sometimes they have a disconnect. And maybe the reason they don't want to be the the exorcist for you or to help you is because they're having their own internal doubts. And if there really is something evil and you walk in and you're not fortified and you have your own, they're going to screw with that religious leader and they're going to make it look like Christ and, and God is not powerful enough to defeat when it's really the vessel. And that's what I've always appreciated about Mm -hmm. Reverend Bean is he says, this isn't me doing this. This is God working through me. And he never wavers on what he can do because he leaves to God. God to work through him to be this power point presentation to the other side, right? And show them you don't belong here and here's why. And this isn't Bill in in the name of Bill Bean be gone. No. That's not how it works. Right? It's it's in the name of God and Yahweh. That's what that's where the power lies. And through yeah. me utilizing that name, that's where the power lies in trying to rid these homes, which a lot of religious leaders don't know, or they're afraid because they have their own failings. And that's human. Right. But sometimes they have to remember that I'm calling upon you to be the vessel of God, not for you to come in with a sword and a, and a, a shield and literally fight something for me. I want you to represent God in my home. But that's why if we all start to learn to become a little closer to whatever God we believe in, whatever religious icon brings us peace, uh, whether it's Mother Earth or Gaia or God or Yahweh or Buddha or Muhammad, whatever your belief system is. You know, the funny thing is, Bill, you brought up earlier that, uh, you know, you have a, you read the Bible verse one way, I can read it another. Well, then I yeah. start my religion over. Then what, what really is the basis is, though, be kind. Never be cruel. Always be loving because love wins in the end. So if we treat boil, others how you want to be treated, yeah. If we boil all these religions and different offshoots to to those simple protocols, that's it. Stop worrying about what your neighbor's doing. Stop. I mean, unless they're hurting children or, sure. or hurting others, don't don't worry about it. Let God judge that later on. You know, that's but keep, exactly right. That that's where it comes down to for me. And I think that if all of us could just come together, start looking past our belief system, past the color of our skins, past the sexual pro- proclivity that we have, and just realize we're all human. 
we're all here going through the same thing and having ups and downs in our lives. I mean, if we if we came together, if we started working together, oh. what a remarkable world we'd live in. It would change instantaneously. Yep. I mean, like within 24 hours, the complete world would be just transformed in a way that uh, the frequency and vibration would be literally just emanating out of the world. Uh, it's just so sad and unfortunate that people can't understand or realize that. And I'm so glad that you brought up a couple of those uh, things that you did, brother, about because that's who I am. You know it. And uh, mm -hmm. I would never, ever take credit or glory for anything. It is God that works through me. And I could never thank God and praise God enough for that. The moment that I would start to, uh, if I got into that ego mindset that I'm something great and special and all that, it would be disastrous. And we've right. seen these things happen before with other people. And it is something that, uh, again, we just have to walk that center line, which is a fine line. And if we venture one way or the other too far, we're in trouble. So I'm glad everything you said, I completely agree with. And uh, I know it's, who is it, Kev or Travis? No, now? I, These yeah, guys, I, everybody I'm wants to ask me something, Dave. Me, then Travis, then Derek. Um, so <laughs> talking of being on location, and I love the way that you kind of logically look at things. Dave, mm -hmm. um, it's how I try to look at things. I try to rule out the logical first before I get to the deep woo. But I, I love the deep woo, mm -hmm. the high strangeness, call it what you will. Sure. Now, you've been to some of the most haunted locations imaginable. Has there ever been an occasion where you've maybe thought you've bitten off more than you could chew? Is there any one incident that kind of stands out for you? Well, I think by looking at my physique, you'll see there's never <laughs> anything I've bitten off that I didn't think I could chew. <laughs> That's the problem. I should have been spitting instead of swallowing. <laughs> um, I, I've been uncomfortable in some locations, but truthfully, I'm, I end up being more uncomfortable because of the humans that I'm with, because of their proclivity to yeah. over-dramatize a moment or... I know that they're there trying to get the attention of the celebrity that they're ghost hunting with or something. And, and, you know, I'm, I'm, that bothers me more, or what is the real motivation between why this person is there? And are they just trying to sell the next Amityville horror book? Um, so I'm very cautious in that, but I, you know, when I did an episode of ghost adventures at rolling Hills, um, I went in there as we're getting set to start filming together. We heard this female scream filled the hall. It was terrifying. And when I turned, I had um, Aaron Goodwin standing off to my uh, right with his camera. I had Zach Bagans directly in front of me. And then off to my left and behind me was Nick Groff. Nick had his camera on his shoulder. Aaron had his camera on his shoulder. We heard the scream. Of course, we're not filming in that moment, so we missed the scream. But as they're putting their cameras down and I turn, I see this white face up over Nick's shoulder. And it looked like the Pazuzu demon from the exorcist. It, it was just this shock, white, terrifying face. And as Nick turned his head to my response, it folded back like it was on a hinge over his shoulder. That was one moment I thought, Oh, Holy hell, what am I doing here? Um, but again, I don't know if it's an intimidation thing. Um, and I'm very, I try to be very cautious. I pray going in and I pray leaving locations. Um, and, you know, and, and for people, if you, if you guys don't mind, this is what I, I pray at every location I go to. Lord, I just ask that you come through this location. I ask that you baptize every room in the blood of Jesus Christ. I ask that the Holy Spirit come through here and find any spirits that are lost or misguided. I ask that you open up the light and bring forth their friends, family, and loved ones to help them ease their transition into the next life. And I pray this in your name. Amen. And I do that throughout an entire location I don't know what power I have as a human to pray these things, but I do know this, that by prayer and by thinking these positive thoughts, it, it does no harm. And and for people out there that are always curious, well, does my prayer get heard? Does it matter? I'll give you one really interesting, for instance, we were at Bobby Mackey's Music World in what they call the, the pit of hell. There's this pit in the floor, and you know, I stood in the pit kind of as a challenge, uh, along with a fellow investigator. And we called on the spirits and, and we got some really abusive, abrasive responses. And at the end of the night, when I went back down in that area, there was a small gaggle of our friends and they were using one of the, the ghost hunting tools, spirit box, Ovilus. And 
I said, everything okay in here? They're like, yeah. I said, all right, I'm going to go close up, get everybody else out of here. You guys wrap up soon. They said, okay. And I start walking away and this machine suddenly says Schrader. And I stop and I'm like, did that just say my name or is my ego that big? <laughs> start walking a few more steps and I hear Schrader. And I turn back around and they go, uh, Dave, I think you're being beckoned. So I go walking back and the spirit box is making all of its normal squawks and barks and weird noises and i said uh all right i'm here what can i do pray and i was like pray okay i said you guys okay with that and they said yeah we all grabbed hands i did that prayer we're listening for something and it's just just the sound of the spirit box and i said well you know unfortunately it's not like the movies we don't see the doors swing open above us and all these souls start going up to heaven at all you know, so it's kind of anticlimactic. You're thinking, oh, God, wish I could have seen something. Did this even help? And as I, I uh, turned to walk away, I go, I hope that helped. The only other word that came out, it said joy. And that was wow. the last word it spoke for the night. So do we have the power by invoking God and invoking a prayer? I believe we do. I believe yeah. that, that, again, it's not Dave Schrader praying. It's Dave Schrader in concert with other believers asking God to help, that that's why we saw such great results. And that's why we got this positive message afterward of joy. Praise wow. God. Wow. Travis, over to you, brother. Well, I love the way that these shows segue sometimes without having to actually backtrack and, wow. and build on something. My, my first question to Dave was about Relig organized religion being so closed off to the supernatural and the paranormal. Then Dave just mentioned that before any investigation, before anything like that, he has a certain prayer that he prays. Organized religion has not always been the only one that was exclusionary. The paranormal world did really, really didn't want to bring the religious aspect, the spiritual aspect in to investigations for the longest period of time. When did we start seeing that change? Because you used to watch the, the the shows, it would it was always about the investigation and the proof, and then mm -hmm. somewhere, somewhere in the past decade, maybe fifteen years, there actually started being this call to action by investigators to actually help the people that they were investigating, and bring in a deliverance minister, d deliverance minister, bring in an exorcist, bring in a shaman or any type of cleric or a religious person to actually do something about the activity there. When did we see that change and when did the paranormal world open up to the, the concept of the spirituality? Well, I, I think I'm safe in saying this and probably Bill can back me. It's been there all along. But TV is very cautious with the way they represent things, especially religion. Because right. listen, I say, hi, I'm Dave Schrader. I'm a Lutheran. I'm a Christian. This is my prayer. And I've now offended 90% of the rest of the audience <laughs> who are Muslim or uh, Jewish or Baptist or Methodist because that's not their way. And instead of realizing, oh, you're trying to help, it suddenly becomes about, well, I don't want your religion pushed down my throat. Why do I have to listen to this prayer? But then when we don't do that, you see, well, you know what the problem with this show is that they don't do anything to help. They just go in and, well, <laughs> you don't see it. We do prayers at every location and we do invoke uh, God to try to help us with these moments of clarity. And But they don't always show it. They'll show it on rare occasion. Even on the Holzer Files, we called in Santeria priests because Santeria people automatically think of voodoo and bad and dark magic, and that's not what Santeria is, right? It's a very earth-born magic as well. And like anything, there are dark facets to every religion. But you know, we, we called in a Santeria priest who was one of the most joyous, wonderful human beings I've ever seen. As a matter of fact, here we are at 2 o'clock, 2.30 in the morning outside of the Morris Jumel Mansion in New York City. And he and his, uh, his helper are trying to um, call forth the spirits to clear them. And they are doing it with such joy and love and music. And But we're all forgetting it's 2, 2.30 in the morning in New York City. And all of a sudden, you start hearing windows open up and, hey, shut the beep up out there. We're trying to sleep. What the hell's wrong hear, with I, As people? he's saying it, I can hear so, that. Yeah. That's right. And, yeah. and, and he turns around, and we're, most of us would be like, shut the beep 
keep up. I'm trying to help God here, right? This guy just turns around and he goes, blessed be you, brother. We are trying to help and we pray for you as well. And it was just so beautiful that he, <laughs> he was so filled with joy that all of this anger and rage just bounced off him. But we show that. But again, all you see is silent activity in the background as we're doing our final tale. And that's because, again, we have to be very cautious with how the religion is portrayed in television. Sure. I tell people we pray at every location. I've, I've said it multiple times on, on shows. And then what happens? People are like, how come you guys never pray or you never do anything to help? And I'm like, well, I, as we've said a thousand other times, we do, but they show it once or twice a season, hoping you get the idea we do this everywhere. We just don't show it all the time. And and that becomes a problem. Plus, there's a thing of when you have an hour, which is really only 42 minutes of TV programming, yeah. and you have this incredible arc of a story with five people that have had experiences, uh, historians, and the location and the investigation, and you've got to cut it all down to 42. Do you take out a, a, you miss a, lot. a minute prayer that is cool to see them do, but you don't get to see the doors open and the angels come forth and there's no payoff for the viewer. So let's cut that out and, and just show the story and, and not miss any beats. So there's, there's aspects. So I think the spirituality has always been there and sometimes they let it show on some shows um, because the, the networks have noticed that people are demanding it and they want to see more of that. So I think that's why you get little spoonfuls of it now more than you yeah. ever did in the past. Yeah, well, because our network, nobody balked when I said, you know, they, they came to me and they're like, Dave, we've got this great Holzer file case, but it ended tragically. This boy ended up, this man ended up committing suicide, but we want to tell this story, but we have, you know, and they're like, you're, you're a guy, you're a radio guy. What, what kind of story could we make this into that doesn't, you know, shatter Holzer because, you know, he was not able to help, but there's limitations on all of us. He thought he had helped and didn't know until years later that the the young man had a relapse and ended up killing himself. So I said, well, you know, it's interesting. And God brings things together because I just got an email two days ago from a listener of my show, Darkness Radio, and she feels that there's a demonic presence in her home afflicting her and her two children. She needs yeah. help. Can we be that help? And they said, Wow. So we could play the original and then show, let's go in with what we learned from that case and where it fell short to bring in some help. And they go, but what do we do? And I said, we call Reverend Bill Bean. First of all, he looks great on TV. He's a big menacing looking guy. And if you're going to have something to beat up a demon, this is the guy you want. <laughs> and they the looked up his video and they're like, yep, let's do this. And they didn't hesitate to call for, for Bill Bean. And the interesting aspect was... And I'm trying to figure out how to word this properly. You never hear us really define it as a demon, right? And Bill was cool with that. He's like, there's definitely things at play here and influence. And it's really easy on TV to jump and say everything's a demon. But sometimes it's, you know, it's our own demons, which I believe a lot of it was what Lydia was dealing with. And she is extremely sensitive, which was making her appealing to the dark forces as well. Mm -hmm. So... Whereas we never believed she was fully possessed, we definitely believed that there was some oppression and infestation activity. That's why we called in Reverend Bean, and he did the prayer of blessing to protect her and shield her. And she, ever since that episode, her life has turned around. Yeah, she was in one God. relationship after another. She was um, hollow. She was very uh, she introverted. Was and felt taking her life. She right. was considering suicide. And here, boom, after this episode and this prayer and this, and, and it wasn't, you see Bill and her at the end of that episode for f f 10 seconds. Bill, after we finished filming, Bill stood there with her for 90 minutes, praying over her, uh. strengthening her, giving her a base to work on. And then when we left oh. that set, it wasn't, well, come on, kids, on to the next. Bill Bean and our team it kept in touch up. with her. And we knew where she was, and we wanted to make sure that there would be no failings of this. And she, I just wrote to her again the other day, two days she's ago. She's doing great. She's doing great. You know, she has some hiccups pop up from time to time, but she's now well prepared to deal with it. And she has a great support staff to, to lean on with Bill. I, I couldn't be more overjoyed, and I praise God for bringing that whole thing together. And he worked through you, uh, Dave, to make that happen. And we praise him for it because she was, she was in dire straits. I mean, when a person is to the point of considering taking their own life, 
That's a serious situation. And uh, just to know that she's okay and she's going to be okay just makes me, uh, the, the feeling that I have from it is off the charts. And again, I praise God for it. And uh, sometimes uh, all of us, we all have to go through some really bad stuff, especially the people that have the higher callings in life to do battle in this way. And uh, it's all part of the journey. So I think she realizes that now for the better or the worse. You know, we all have things that we go through in life and it is all about moving forward. And she really is living in that warrior mode now. And I'm just so thankful to God that he intervened in the situation and all the right people that were supposed to be involved were involved. And so there's one of the big success stories uh, that come out of these types of things. So I, I hope that answered your question, Travis. I know I get long-winded and spin off on different angles, but <laughs> we all do. Bill, Bill and I have, have experienced this in the past. I've, I've represented Bill from a PR publicist standpoint, an agent, a manager, yep. and we've yep. gotten to the point of shows where, especially uh, Ancient Aliens was one that wanted Bill, but his particular ideology and theological views did not mesh up with, with the ones that the producers wanted. Um, Another, uh, there was another UFO project that we were working on, and they, because of his theological views, they did they wanted him to tone that rhetoric down, not talk so much about the fallen angels, the demons, the nephilims, and talk more about extraterrestrials, interdimensional beings, etc. So I, I and, and I've I've worked in reality TV uh, for several years, so I get exactly what you're saying. Yeah, and there's, only, just, there's only so much that we can do on a 42-minute TV show as well yeah. to mm -hmm. convey exactly. the whole story. And what yeah. we really focus on is exactly. the history. But, you know, listen, people uh, – we try to talk to people about these things in a logical way. And I think this is where we – the misgivings of religion and God and, and these practices fall apart because religion and God is not logic. It's emotion-based. Right. Which is why we have so much trouble translating in relationships. A lot of times one of the partners is definitely a more emotionally based. The other one is more logically based. Mm -hmm. And when you're you know, I can say A to Z to my wife of why this makes sense. But what I'm not hearing is this hurts my whole heart, Dave. Yeah. And it doesn't matter that A to Z might say this sense. shouldn't. What you have to realize is that, but what you're saying hurts or what, what I'm feeling hurts. And then you address that. Yeah. And what happens a lot of times is we, we lose sight of that. And I think that if we uh, just start to, again, treat each other with kindness and love and understanding and stop looking at the logic of what religion is, I want, well, show me, prove to me God exists. Man, God exists around us everywhere. It just depends on what you're willing to see. I, I was driving with my son, and this is one of my famous, uh, favorite, most tame miracle moments in history. I was driving with my son, and he was very little, maybe 9, 10 years old, and he asked me about religion, and he asked me about miracles. Dad, do you believe in miracles? I said, I sure do. I've seen, listen, your birth is a miracle, right? I mean, aside from just the magic of one sperm hitting one egg and poof, life, that's amazing. But your birth, everything about it, you were a home birth. You had the cord wrapped around your throat. Oh, you were wow. breech. Everything about it should not have happened. You shouldn't be here. But God had another plan. And I yes. get to talk about that, which means I get to share that story with the world to show that there are amazing things taking place. But, you know, he goes, well, I want to see a miracle. And I said, OK. And I said, all right, God, let's show my son a miracle here. Let's give us a miracle. And we drive up over the ridge. And I pull the car over and I go, there you go, buddy. And he goes, what? And I go, there's your miracle. And he goes, I don't see anything. And I said, get out of the car. And we got out of the car and we walked. And I said, do you see it yet? And he said, no. And I said, what do you want a miracle to be? And he goes, well, shouldn't like somebody come back from the dead or, you know, shouldn't we be able to fly? And I said, uh, right. That's a pretty stupendous miracle. But what about something else that's right in front of you that does not fit anywhere else? And he goes, well, what do you mean? I said, son, just look. Sometimes you have to remove the scales and the blinders to see. Right. And, and, and he said, well, how about the sunflower? And I said, go on. And he goes, well, this is, this is kind of weird. And I said, go on. And he goes, because there's only one sunflower and it's coming up from a crack in the middle of the road. Oh, wow. So the crack is this long and this wide, right? And this deep. 
So somewhere along the line, a bird had to fly over and drop a sunflower seed that landed perfectly into that crevasse and enough sunlight and enough water had to come. And then for this to be so close to the highway and not have been hit or torn down and only one sunflower and it's six feet tall, I ask for a miracle. Five minutes there later, was. we've got a miracle. And, and my son just kind of looked at me. Now, again, logic and emotion are two different things. He's like, but it's just a flower, Dad. Flowers grow everywhere. I said, but there's – you see all these yellow flowers? You see all these purple flowers? You see all the bushes? But there's one sunflower coming up out of the middle of asphalt right after I asked for a miracle. I said, you've got to be willing to accept that sometimes miracles are not what we want them to be. Sometimes miracles are there whether we accept them or not, but it's the way you choose. And if I choose to see life through the eyes of miracles and see these things, my life is blessed and I can share that blessings with others. And people will come to me. And, and the hardest thing in the world, right, is, all right, all right, Derek, great. You prayed and that little girl was found. But what about my daughter who wasn't found, mm-hmm. you know? And, and that's a tough moment. But sometimes you look at the things that happen and come from these instances. And we look at Adam Walsh, the young boy that was abducted in the early 70s, early 80s, and his father, John Walsh, devastating news. They find his head, and that's it. And people prayed, and he prayed to God to, to give him an answer and to bring back his son, and he didn't. And you're like, well, where was God for John Edwards? Well, or not John Edwards, but uh, John Walsh. Yeah, John Walsh. And I said, God was there all along, and you don't have to like the response. And this is where logic and emotion take two different opposing views. Mm-hmm. But I want you to realize that God lit the fuse of something much more powerful, because He let loose a warrior that during His run on America's Most Wanted, because yeah. of His passion and desire, the the laws changed, things changed, and how many lives were saved because John Walsh lost one child. Like God I gave His only begotten Son so that yeah. all of us could be saved. John Walsh lost his son, but in his fury, He became a warrior that made sure that others paid the price and that they were stopped before their crimes continued. There's a miracle in that. Again, it's sometimes the miracle is the unanswered prayer. It may not soothe our soul or soothe our heart, but I know because I've read and I've heard John talk, knowing that he's helped others and knowing that his crusade has saved other lives and found lost children it won't bring back his son, but it makes the loss not in vain. It makes the loss a driving force. And sometimes we have to look at those, and it's tough because emotionally we just are wrecked and we want a direct answer. But sometimes the answer is in look at what came after. Look at what you learned after all of this. I am 100% in agreement. Uh, it's amazing. Yeah, and I'm sure you guys are taking this in. Uh Dave really could have had a path as a minister, I, I really, I mean, because the things that he's saying is absolutely true and they're faith-based. And, and you know, when he talks about these miracles, it's absolutely true. Furthermore, God works a miracle for each and every one of us every single day. When we open our eyes, that's the miracle of life. Life's not a uh, promise tomorrow. We're not, uh, life's a gift, so we're not promised tomorrow. There's nothing written anywhere that says you're gonna live this amount of years and you'll die on this day, right. it's not there. So life is a gift. So that is a miracle that God works for us each and every day. So very well said, uh, Dave. I'll tell you, everything you've said here, I, I am in total agreement with. And I hope and pray that there are people out there right now that are tuning in and hearing this. And maybe they're inspired now because they've lost a loved one and they've had a tough road. And uh, in hearing this type of dialogue that we have right now, I pray that it is getting through and planting good seeds with them so they can move forward. Well, listen, it's easy, again, to focus on the negativity of a situation. When I look back at my point in high school, when I was ready to take my life, I had a girlfriend I was madly in love with. She was pregnant with my child. The doctor said because of her health and size, it was probably going to put her life and the baby's life in jeopardy. The only option was termination. Mm. And 
we had to live through that. And because of that, it, it broke up our relationship and I lost a lot of friends and I got despondent and I pulled that gun and was going to put the bullet in my head and the gun fired, but nothing happened. Clack, nice. it fired, nothing happened. And I see the headlights of my dad's car pan into the driveway. And I thought, I can't do this to my dad. I can't let him hear the, the crack and know that mm -hmm. he was that close to being there to stop me. So I put the gun away. I went, listen to music. I'm listening through my headphones. And I, I catch Dancing in the Dark by Bruce Springsteen, which was a really popular song at the time. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. and, and I'm just listening. I'm not thinking. I'm just listening. And every channel I turn to, I'm catching this song either the whole song or part of it. And then it's about the sixth, listen to this. It's like somebody's got their hands crushed up against the side of my head and somebody releases their hands. And all of a sudden I start to hear these words. You can't start a fire sitting around crying with a broken heart, right? You can't start a fire worrying about your little world falling apart. You know, here he's singing in this song. And in this moment, I'm so ego driven that Nothing like this is the most horrible thing in the world that could ever happen. You know, poor me, poor me, poor me. And then all of a sudden I start listening. This guy's like, hey, I don't like my clothes, my hair, my face. I don't like where I live. I don't like my life. It's so easy to, to succumb and dance in the dark. Mm -hmm. But what you can do is you can reassess and, and realize that this does not make your end. These are the, th the moments that do, do, do not define us. And when I came out, I, I was compelled one day to type this story and put it on social media back in the days of MySpace, right? Way yeah. back then. And <laughs> in the response, a part of me was like, are people going to just think I'm an idiot? And I put out this, this story of my suicide attempt and what saved me. Bruce Springsteen's music saved me. And... Uh, Obviously, I know it was God helping through all of this and brought me to but that. But see, God does work in mysterious ways yeah. like that. No doubt. And it, it hit me and I posted. You know what's been the most gratifying thing is I, I repost it every few years. And this isn't an ego thing, but it soothes my soul to get messages saying I was on that bridge. And I read what you posted and it backed me off. Yeah. And I, I you... Hang That's the there, power bro. of God, bro. Hang in there. That Hang in there with me, brother. That people tell me that I was for them what Springsteen was for me. Yeah. And that's how God works. So he can take anything or anybody and and use Lovely them as a man. vessel. And and that was the perfect, just those lyrics right there, the song. It was all what God wanted you to take in at that point in time to say, no, 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 you have a long journey ahead of you. And so God has had this calling on your life so that you got into this world that you would do great things and that he can work through you to be a blessing to many. And that's what it's all about. We should all strive in that way, praying that God will work through us to be a blessing to somebody in some way, shape or form. So I right, love And you don't know it. That happened when I was, what, 16, 17 years old. And yeah. here I am at 54. I've got 11 children between my wife and I, 11 new souls that are going to go out and make this world a better place. Yeah. I've got, you know, so at the time, it didn't make sense to me to why would these things happen to me? Why would, you know, it's all about me, me, me. And and instead, you realize that, boy, had I checked out, and that's what I try to tell people that are on that line, today seems dark, today seems bleak. And it's when you stand there and fight that depression and you fight it like a storm like that scene in Forrest Gump I love it when Lieutenant Dan's in the ship and the rain starts coming and he shakes yeah. his fist and he's like is this all you got God sometimes that's painful but you know what that storm blows over yeah, yeah. and it's at the end of it you're washed you're clean and you get to yep. start over you realize I made it through that all these things I've made it through there's some other reason I'm here and and whether it's to share this story tonight on your program that maybe somebody else will hear and feel like I'm not alone. Bruce Springsteen made me realize I'm not the only guy that ever felt this way, which is that was my headspace. I'm all alone. I feel bad. No, this guy did it. Not only did he live through it, but here he is now 70 some years old, still putting out music, still doing what he does. So there's a reason why we live these lives and, and checking out. I've, I've told everybody that's in a position, listen, you don't know what tomorrow may bring. That one answer, that one thing that would have turned your life around could just be another day away. And you've just got to give it a chance. And no matter Absolutely how bleak true. it seems, that's when you have to stand up and say, listen, this sucked. 
this is horseshit. What happened to me is unbelievable. But that's not what defines me. What's going to define me today is that I'm going to stand off. I'm going to brush off this dirt. I'm going to look for it. And I'm going to say, thank you for another day to make this right. Thank you for one more chance to reach somebody, to help somebody, to do something and try to entertain people. And, and, and you listen wow. and Tim and I get all these emails that I save where people have written to me and they're like, you know, and not even re referencing that story, but they'll reference, I've been in bad places and you guys make me laugh till I'm almost ready to cry yeah. listening to your show sometimes. And I, I just, you, need, you need to know you make a difference. And that's what we all need to hear. And I don't think you need to be a podcast host or a TV guy to say that. Reach out to somebody right now. And we all know somebody right now that needs to hear you mean something to me. You meant something to me. That time you reached your hand out to me and pulled me up out of that muck and mire made a difference. And sometimes that's enough to bring somebody else back up out of a hole that you that's may think it's all about. They're always happy. They're always in a good mood. That facade wears thin soon. Sometimes they need that love bucket filled again with, with courageous words and, and adoration Correct. to feel good. And, and that's what we should be doing. Not tearing each other down because of our, our, differences and contrasts and beliefs, mm -hmm. sexuality and color, but lifting each other up and saying, let's get better together. Let's not let this Love define it. us. Let's find a new way to move forward and make this a better place for all of us. Love it. And guys, I want to tell you, I didn't expect wow. this show to go the way that it has today. I mean, I knew Dave was going to be great. I knew he was going to have a lot of things to talk about, but what he's talking about here, um, this uh, really exceeds my expectations mm -hmm. of how this was going to go today. And I praise God for it. And so um, thank you, brother. This is, I really appreciate you speaking you. in the way that you have been speaking here because this is uplifting and this is going to plant so many good seeds with the people that are tuning into this right now. And I want people to realize something else, and I'm, I'm not going to continue to beat the religious drum to, to ad nauseum, but when people say, well, things, you have to believe in things for them to work. It's not true. God can work in your life without your belief at all. Mm -hmm. I had a great, a good friend of ours um, who, it was right after we started our podcast back in 2006. Uh, at the beginning of 2007, she collapsed from a massive asthma attack. She was put on machines. They were pulling the plug and they were going to go do last rites. And one of her teammates said, I don't know that I believe in this prayer stuff that you do, but Cheryl needs something, a miracle. And I put it out on my social media. And hundreds of people from around the world at that time, hundreds of people wrote in and they, they prayed. And you know what's amazing, folks? Cheryl was unconscious with no clue that hundreds, maybe thousands of people around the world from all different walks of life were focused on her and praying for her. She came out of the hospital two days later and as a lifelong asthmatic, has only had to use her puffer four or five times in the last 15 years. Praise so God. you tell me that, that, that it That's doesn't amazing. happen, you That's don't have amazing. to be awake. You don't have to know That's amazing. When, when it's working in your favor. When my son, my last son was born, he was, he was going to be two months premature. His mother was preeclampsia. Um, sh they were afraid neither one of them were going to make it. And I posted just before going in, I posted to social media, I need my prayer warriors, my army of darkness radio to come together, pray, send healing, send white light. He was born two months premature. The doctor said, listen, here's the rule of thumb. He's two months premature. He'll be here for two months. Then after that two months, he's going to um, uh, probably need another two to three months to be in the hospital because he has to be able to swallow, eat, maintain his body heat and, and do these things. And I said, OK. And those prayers and healing came in. We were out of the hospital uh, his mother was out of the hospital within a few days after having preeclampsia, which could have taken her life, and uh, an immediate uh, circumcision, or not circumcision, um, cesarean section. Yeah. And then, cesarean, yeah. yeah, then my son, check this out, my son, who was two months premature and had at least six months ahead of him in the hospital, was home within a month. Within That's the power of God. And see, you're right, Dave. This is why I post it's prayers amazing. for people every day. You do the same thing. You'll hear or see, uh, you know, this momentous prayer list that oh, yeah. we will do at the end of the show. And, and the power of prayer does work. And when we come together, it caring for others, 
God is with us and he hears our prayers and, you know, we're eliminating the self. Jesus was selfless. So when we follow in the path of Jesus and we become selfless and now we come together being selfless and coming together uh, for someone that is really in need of a miracle, God will hear our prayers and miraculous things do happen. So, man, I'm so glad that you're sharing all these things and it is really inspiring to hear. Uh, I saw some messages between you guys. I don't know if I'm going long. Um, do you have time? No, I don't want you to go long. I, I want. I mean, you keep going. We've got to, and if you'll stay with us, if you don't mind. Sure. We had to bring in um, Stan Gordon. at. So when you were going to leave, we were going to bring Stan Gordon. He had okay. contacted me and asked if he could give an update. Uh, he's got a lot of stuff, and I know you know Stan Gordon. Yep. Um, He's got, there's a lot of uh, recent activity going on in the Western PA area. So I think what we're going to do, and I'm stand, uh, sending Stan a message right now. If you'll stay with us, Dave, if you don't mind, um, we'll bring him in for a couple of minutes. But I want you to continue to stay on with us. I just want to hear what he has to say as well with this update. As long as you're not, you don't worry about getting long-winded. We're worried about keeping you too long. That's all. <laughs> No yeah. problem. I've got, uh, you know, I could probably stay. How much longer is your show going? Well, usually, to be honest with you, with the dialogue that we've got right now, we could be rolling for a while. So usually <laughs> ends at nine o'clock. But, uh, okay. you know, again, by the time the prayer list is over and everything, let's just say we're not going to rush you off. That's for okay. sure. So oh, sure. Bring, uh, bring in Stan and I'll I'll throw another uh, anecdote or two, and then we can uh, we can all talk to together. I want you to talking because this has been a tremendous blessing. Just the things that you're saying, it is it's got to be so up. I don't look at the chat while the show is on, but I'm sure that Travis and Kevin, Derek, can see it. And there, oh, yeah. I, I know there's got to be people we, in there we, that are. We've surpassed some of our highest numbers on on the YouTube right. channel tonight, uh, and the the chat is off off the chain. I mean, people are <laughs> so I mean, the, this is uh, this has been great, and we praise God for it. Um, so you just we you talk about anything that you want to talk about, and everything that you're talking about here is absolutely not only relevant, but it is uh, really faith based, and it's inspiring people. There's no doubt about it. You know, I've I've got uh, if we have time before Stan gets on, I've got two quick little uh, stories. Again, what do you consider a miracle? You've got to look at the way you assess things. When I was in college, I had loved radio all growing up. I've always wanted to do radio. It's not a real easy to business to get into. I went to college. I was uh, kind of a goofball. And I'd never left the home much. And my roommates are like, Schrader, get out and find a life. You can't just stay in our house, right? You got to get out there. So I said, all right. I walked out the door and there's a cute, and this was 1988, 89. There's this cute little blonde with a ponytail, short 80 shorts, tight t-shirt who goes walking by. And I'm like, well, let's see where we're off to today. And I start following her across <laughs> campus. Now, this was long before the stalking rules were in effect. So don't get all worried, <laughs> folks. But I, I followed this beautiful girl. We walked. She went into the Performing Arts Center. And I thought, okay, I've done plays. I love that stuff. I'll, I'll Maybe I'll join a play with her. And I walked in and she walked past the tryouts. And I walked, followed her down the hall and she walked past the singing rooms. And she went up to the top floor and she went to the last door on the left. And she entered that door. And I waited out in the hall for a few minutes to not look too creepy. And then I walked in the door and uh, it said, KQAL, your radio alternative now looking for on-air talent. And I said, OK. And I went in with that. I'll use that and then get to meet this cute blonde. She's nowhere to be seen. I'm in a room full of guys and I'm doing this the whole time. My head's spinning and I'm looking around for her. Sir. So you like radio? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You want to be on radio? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, well, we could search you tomorrow. Okay, great. Uh, and then I go, hey, who's that blonde that came in here? And they all stopped and looked at each other and they're like, what? And I said, there was a cute blonde with a ponytail. And it's all guys are like, don't you think we would have noticed if a cute blonde with a ponytail? <laughs> we wouldn't be standing here talking to you. And I said, is there another door that she maybe cut through and go out? They're like, she would have had to go through the two studios, which are in use, to get out through the back door. So I'm like, I, I'm telling you, I followed a beautiful blonde in here. Well, a couple months later, I'm driving home to Chicago from Winona, Minnesota. And I'm driving. 
And we would find these little packs of cars that are all going to the same state. They've all got Illinois license plates. We we drift off each other. So take turns, somebody being in the front, somebody being in the rear, so we could speed and, you know, the cops would have to pick off somebody. But, you know, you all took a turn at, at going fast. And, <laughs> and right well, as, as we're part of this pack and we're driving, one of the girls in this pack pulls up next to me. She's really a cute blonde, right? And she, she looks over at me and she points to the exit and she goes, like, you want to go get something to eat? And I'm looking and I'm like, man, I'm making kick-ass time. I don't know if I want to. And then I'm looking and I'm like, but that's a beautiful girl. All right. So I nod and I give her the thumbs up. She, she that's takes always the, the right decision. Right. She that's takes always the right decision. Right Unless decision. you're married and happily like I am, right, then it's always right. the worst decision. But I follow her off the road. <laughs> I follow her. She's gone. I can't find her to save my life. I drive around parking lots of every restaurant I could find, Target, <laughs> Walmart parking lot. She's nowhere to be found. I'm like, what the hell? Did I just get ghosted? And this is before ghosting took place, right? So I stop. I eat my lunch. I get back on the road. Um, I'm out in there for about an hour. I get up on the road, and I run into a wall of traffic. What the hell? This is stupid, man. If I'd have just kept going, no, no, no. I got to be dumb and follow some girl, and I don't even get to hook up with her, and she's gone, and and I'm traffic, traffic. Finally, I make it. It takes forever. And what do I do? I get up there, and a uh, semi-truck had flipped. And in the side of the semi-truck are three of the cars that I'd been driving with. Oh, wow. Truck again. flipped, and cars smashed into it. Wow, and I would have been to that. And I was just like, I, you know, I was, I, I recognized the cars. I'm like, oh my God, this could have been me. She saved you. I could have been twice, <laughs> twice. You so when you, uh, when you do these reflections like this, you know, you look back and you go, wow, God really does have favor on you. God really does have angels with you. And I think God does things uh, in a way that we can identify with or a way that will draw us and intrigue us and however that is. And that was, you know, your mindset back then. And and so this is what he does. Uh, it's just amazing. The more you yeah. talk, the more confirmation it is about how blessed your life is and how many times God has been there for you. Oh, yeah. Well, I, had, I, I have a story called... Uh, um, truck stop Jesus, right? And uh, this was before I was accepted to college. Listen, I was a late, I graduated in 85 and I decided to go to college in 88. Um, so I'd been out for a long time and I, I was working behind the scenes to make all these things happen. And I had to go take the college acceptance uh, exam at Winona State. And I was terrified because I'm like, math is horrible for me. I cannot be too. Math. Yeah. Just to save my life. So I'm driving there. I've got an old 69 Plymouth Fury 3. I'm not a car guy. I just got a really great deal on this gorgeous old Christine car, right? I, I'm driving, and all of a sudden, I start getting steam from the hood, and I pull off at night to this truck stop area. Um, I pull off. I'm all by myself. There's one other old rusty Nova-looking car in the parking lot, and I'm, I'm standing there, and I pop up in the hood, not sure what I'm looking at because, again, I'm not a car guy. And I'm standing there staring and looking at the engine thinking, what the hell's wrong? And all of a sudden, I see Jesus come walking out of the woods. This is long-haired hippie guy with the beard, the mustache, the long hair, torn jeans, dirty shirt. And I'm like, oh, God, am I about to get held up, right? And he comes <laughs> walking over and he goes, hey, man, what's going on? And I said, I'm trying to get to college. I got to go take this test in the morning. I, you know. I'm screwed. I don't know anything about cars. He goes, let me see. And he lights a flashlight and looks under the hood. And he goes, look, dude. And again, I don't know anything about cars. So he's go, oh, man, you blew your floppy dingle. And I'm like, oh, no, not the floppy dingle. What floppy the hell is that? What I can't remember that? what it was called. He goes, well, hold on, man. Let me see. And he goes over to his car, opens his trunk, pulls out an old box full of tools. And he's got a little bag. And in the bag is this little rubber stopper. And he goes, dude, I have a floppy dingle. And I'm like... <laughs> I go, what? And one. He goes, I have one. He, and he reaches in and pulls off the one that had blown the top. Basically, it was like a rubber cap. And he, he shows me, and the top's blown off on it. And he goes, and he puts it on there, and he pushes it down. And then he says, just wait till your engine cools down. Fill the, the tank back up with cold water. You'll be good to go. I'm like, okay. And he goes, so, now, what are we going to do? And I thought, oh, no. And this was right at the time, the you know, late 80s, when they started talking about these uh, homosexual encounters that yeah. were taking place at truck stops. And I'm oh, like, oh, no. Favors, you owe them right. favors now. And I, I'm looking, and I don't <laughs> want to go to that dark place, right? I don't want to be that guy. But I'm like, oh, shoot. And then I look at him, and I go, well, 
I literally have enough money to get me to school, take my test, eat my lunch and come back home. And he goes, I didn't say I wanted money. And I'm like, oh, no. Yeah, this is not sounding good. He looks at me and he goes, this is what you're going to do for me. And I said, okay. And he goes, you're going to do something nice for a stranger. No expectations and no reason to be paid for it. You're just going to do something good. And I said, all right, I can do that. And he gave me this big smile. And he said, all right, safe travels and walk back into the woods. And that was it. <laughs> Trucks, oh, Jesus, God. saved my soul and got me back on the road. And then to show that miracle, I get in there. I get in early. I couldn't sleep that night, so I'm really a mess. And I'm sit- sitting there in the lobby of the the deal with this young guy who looks like he's maybe two years older than me. And he goes, oh, are you here for the ACT? I said, yeah. He goes, are, I go, are you? He goes, yeah. So he's like, uh, so are you excited about this? I said, I'm really nervous. I'm not a math guy. And this is the only thing keeping me out of college. I'm a new father. I've you know, got a new life. And I'm, I'm trying to make right for him, even though his mom and I aren't together. I want to take care of my son and have somebody to be proud of. He's like, oh, I get that. So crowd keeps filling into the lobby and all of a sudden this guy looks at his watch and goes over and opens up the door. And uh, I'm like, what's going on? Well, he was the instructor giving the tests. So we do all of our tests. The last test is math. And he comes over to me and he goes, hey, um, usually we have tests A, B, A, B, A, B. So you can't cheat off your neighbor. I've only got two B math tests left. And he sets it down in front of the the girl next to me and me. And he goes, uh, can I trust you guys not to cheat? And she's like, oh, of course, you know? And uh, I'm like, sure. So the minute he walks out, I'm cheating the whole time. Unfortunately, (laughs) just as dumb as I was at math, we passed by one point. But, But I felt like that was divine intervention, right? Uh, Truck Stop Jesus got me there. This teacher heard my story and left the room for this last math test, knowing I said I couldn't pass it on my own. And he let me cheat off the girl next to me. And so it was was remarkable. It's a cool little story. And again, how do you look at it? Am I uh, overanalyzing? But everything fell into place the way it needed to. Something was guiding me along that pathway. And And again... We praise God for all of it. The more you talk, the more you get these confirmations that, and you're giving confirmation that God has really, really been with you and continues to be with you throughout your life. Right. And, and he brings me people at the right times. You know, even when my mom died, I, I'll wrap up with this. My, my mom died five years ago of cancer and it broke Sorry. my heart and I was so mad. You know, she yeah. was... She just got to retire. She was going to travel the world with my dad. Mm. She had spent her life in service to others as a nurse, and she loved it. She was a neonatal intensive care unit nurse. She worked in a hospital for uh, crippled children, Shriners Children's Hospital, to help them. She And all these people that said she saved their lives and her love and support, and it was just amazing. And I was so mad at God. I was like, why? Why would you do this? And I had to go up and give the little eulogy. Oh. and livid and tim took me aside and he's like d my tim's my co-host on on darkness radio and he goes what's what's bothering you aside from mom being gone and i'm like she was robbed man and he goes was she she met the man of her dreams she spent her life with him she had a son that she was immensely proud of she got to travel throughout her life with your dad she got to work in a field she adored and people adored her And when the going got tough and the cancer hit, she was taken pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. She didn't suffer for years and and years. Thank God for that. A couple of months in hospice care and she was gone. And he readjusted my thoughts to what it really means to, again, be a miracle. And the miracle was she lived for seven years. And we should have lost her two years before because in hindsight, you can look back at the trigger signs that you missed. And I realized that she was probably dealing with cancer years before, but never let us know out of fear that how we would react. Uh, We should have lost her then and we didn't. And she stayed alive and I got two more years out of her and she got to meet her first great grandchild. And then she was gone. So, And you'll see her again, brother. You'll see her again in God's heavenly kingdom. There's no doubt about that. And, and I believe in those things, and I believe that there's these uh, uh, immaculate moments. And sometimes, again, it's just an asking for it. I have a crucifix with my mother's ashes in it. And I was on the Walker Stalker cruise for the fans of The Walking Dead. I was there to be an entertainer and talk and tell ghost stories. And we got home, and the necklace was gone, and the crucifix was gone, and I was brokenhearted. Oh. And I'm like, damn it, I lost it at sea. This is horrible. And... Uh, a couple months later, I'm sitting there and I write a message to my mom on Facebook. I send her a message 
to her email and I just said, mom, I just need proof that you're around, you know, and I love you and I miss you so much. Just give me any kind of sign. Well, the next day, next day, I tell my kids, hey, we can't find your brother's glasses. $5 reward to whoever finds the glasses. Well, they found the glasses, but my son Nathan walks up to me and he goes, dad, and he's got this little jar that's obviously too small to hold the glasses in. And he goes, dad, I looked in this jar for the glasses. I go, that's good, honey, but that's too small. He goes, oh, I know, but look, and he opens it up and reaches in and there's my mom's crucifix with the ashes. No necklace to be found, just the crucifix. And I'm like, how is that even possible? And boom, there it was. We found, and it was within a day of asking for a sign from the other side and boom. Well, I mean, God, divine intervention or my mom's ghost. Hello, Kevin. Hey, Stan, how's it going? Give me two seconds. I'm going to have to add the other guys back into the call here. Give me two seconds, okay? Sure. How are you doing, Stan? We're doing good, thank you. How are you? I'm doing very good, sir. Very good. Give me two seconds. Okay, give me two secs here. Audience on YouTube, they're all waiting patiently. I'm just going to add in the guys right now. There's Bill coming. Let's get Derek. We'll get Travis. There we go. Let's see. Travis. Stand by, audience. It's all gone a bit. A wire. Kev. Hey, there's Bill. Okay. I don't know what happened. Uh, well, it's because we had to phone Stan. It's a phone oh. number, so we have to start a totally fresh call to get the phone first. Unfortunately. Oh, okay. Well, how are we going to end this with Dave? Well, I guess well we're going to call. Him, we're, yeah. we're going to call him back, and um, hopefully okay. Derek can not realize that. Okay. Um, yeah, I was hesitant to uh, pick up because I'm thinking, okay, wait a minute now, what is this? <laughs> Try to get Travis. Two seconds, I'll get Dave back, hopefully. Here we go. Talk, Bill, for the audience. I'm, I'm still trying to get people in here. You've got Stan okay. on the line with you. Stan is here with us. Stan? Hi, Bill. How are you? We're doing good. Thank you. Keep we're... busy here. Always a lot of reports coming in. Oh, man. We're anxious to hear it. I'm sorry that it took us longer to call you. Uh, you know, we've had a great uh, interview here with Dave, and uh, it's just carried a little further than uh, we thought. So I hope you'll bear with us. And uh, we're certainly not going to rush you off. So, you know, you tell us everything you need to tell us. And, and we're looking forward to hearing it. What Kev had to do is when he brought you in, it cut off the other guys. So now he's trying to get them back on so we can, you know, everybody back uh, and, and we can hear and see each other. Travis, can That's you no- um, try and restart your camera? I'm here. Can you see me? All right, I yeah, see we Derek. see you, yet. Okay. All right, cool. Is I'm Dave here. with us? No, not yet. Yeah, he must have noticed that I lost him or we lost him while I was talking to him. It's just amazing. I mean, he's uh, so great. And he t- I did my not God. expect him to talk about all those faith-based Jeez. things. That was fantastic. My God. Yeah. And now we got Stan with us. Stan is here, Derek. Hey, Stan. How you doing? I think good, we've... Derek. How are you? Good, good. Welcome back, my friend. I think oh, we've I got can't Travis wait to hear as well. To say now. I think we've got Travis as well. Um, Travis I think here? we're probably just as well starting, guys. Dave, is Dave with us? No, no. All 
right, so I'll have to send him a message and tell him that we... I've already sent him a message. Oh, good, good, good. Um, so I see... I don't see you, You're Dennis. not going to see, see Travis. You'll see me in a minute. Just oh, pretend we're, we're on air just now, Bill, so probably just best talking to Stan and I'll get everything okay. else sorted. All right, so Stan... Please tell us what the latest is. Uh, there must be a plethora of activity going on because uh, you told me you'd get to me uh, if something was going on. So obviously something major is going on there. Well, we're, we've had a lot of sightings since I last talked to you. I mean, I get reports again all year round, but it's yeah. been interesting. I think I had mentioned to you probably on the last show about that um, really interesting wave of UFO activity in a greater Pittsburgh area and other parts of PA during late February and March, and I'm still re I've received in recent weeks some unreported sightings in that period of time, and that was uh, quite an interesting series of events, uh, as you might recall, because there were there are daylight sightings, there were many low-level sightings in, in populated areas around Pittsburgh. Uh, there was a, new, a number of triangular-shaped objects, quite a number of reports of large, solid cigar-shaped objects being reported. They've been, wow. been pretty consistent with reports these small spheres of light. And of course we had some of those low level reports that are small balls of light, similar to what Todd's been reporting up in his area. Yeah. And uh, that was quite a fascinating um, series of cases. Um, more recently, uh, I believe it's been kind of around mid May into early June. We had another series of uh, incidents that seemed like all of a sudden we began to get a, a bunch of UFO reports. And then, we began to get Thunderbird reports, a Bigfoot report, some other cryptid reports, and these are all from different areas. But it seems like it sometimes it comes in waves, and that's really interesting. So when we do the next show, I'm going to have a lot more detail for you because I'm still looking into some of these reports. Just um, amazing, Stan, how that's just uh, really picked up. It, it sounds to me, based on what you're saying, you know, uh, it's, it's steady. It doesn't seem to be slacking off any. No, I, I get reports here quite steadily. And um, I just put up on my website, you can see some of these sketches. Uh, I had a report up there from the night of June 12th. I had a report from Cambria County. It's kind of uh, north of Pittsburgh. And that's an area that for several months now, we've been getting uh, a various UFO reports. A, a lot of these seem to be these long elongated cigar-shaped objects, elliptical objects being reported. But on the evening of June 12th, a fellow who's very familiar with aircraft, about 7, 18 p.m., sees this object. He said it was about 200 feet above the ground when he first saw it, shaped like a cigar, but it had no wings. He said the front and rear section appeared to be white or silver and seemed to be rounded off. The center was a grayish-blue color. And he said that he was moving so slow that he couldn't understand how it was even maintaining flight in the air. And then he saw it for seconds. He didn't have his camera at the time. But about 7.29 that evening, he saw it again. But this time, it was a much higher altitude. But the only camera he had, it was an older model digital camera with a small viewer. So he began to snap some pictures, he took four or five pictures, and he was surprised that he at least got a picture of it on the one um, setting. So anyhow, there's a picture of it. It's, it's there. It's very, very small. In fact, the photo analyst uh, We've tried to do some investigation on it. it. It's so small. There's not enough detail, unfortunately, with the camera he was using. Right, so it'll but, pixelate uh, out if you, the more you zoom in, it's uh, the less detail you're going to get, right? That's correct. But about an hour later, after his report came in, I get a call from Allegheny County. So it's about 60 miles away from another witness. And this fellow's telling me he saw this thing around 830. So this was ba basically within the hour of the first sighting, but it was about 60 miles away. And he's telling me about seeing this dark object that came from the Southwest. He said it was very hard to describe, it was so unusual, but he said it appeared to be hovering about 1,500 feet in the sky. It was completely silent, black in color, was rounded and long. It had no lights or windows. He grabbed his binoculars. And he said this thing, the sides appeared to be kind of bulbous looking, he described it, but he said the center was thin. And he said he estimated this thing was about 75 feet long. But he said what was so unusual was, as he's watching this thing, he said it began to physically change form. 
And he says at times it looked almost gelatinous. It would stretch and shrink and go back to its original shape. So I just posted two sketches he did for me. They're on the website now so you can compare what it looked like hovering and then when it was taking off and how it appeared to change shape. And, you know, I've been saying for years and years, there's a lot of the reports I've investigated with these things that suddenly physically appear in the sky, even in daylight. They sometimes just vanish and disappear. Sometimes they look physically solid, but sometimes they physically change from one form to another, and they fade away and they disappear. And yeah. sometimes you can see the outline of these large objects, but you can see right through them so they're transparent. Yeah, it's amazing. So, and Stan, we've got Dave Schrader with us. He's been uh, with us the whole time. We just had a little breakdown here on the Skype thing when we got you in. Uh, Dave, and I know you guys know each other. Uh, Dave, do you have any questions for Stan as he's talking about this uh, phenomena that's really on the uptick there in Western PA? I got to be honest with you. I just got uh, put back into the conversation. So all I caught was a gelatinous gel. And I'm like, uh, I missed the rest of the story, sadly. But uh, yeah, I, there's a lot of weird stuff going on in the world around us right now. I'm, I'm fascinated to hear what else Stan's got to share. Yeah, go ahead, Stan. Dave. Uh, Dave, it's good to hear your voice again. Um, yeah, there's a lot of interesting things. Another During that time period, uh, as mentioned more recently, in uh, May and June, um, I got a report from Eric Alton from the Pennsylvania Bigfoot Society. Yeah. And he was investigating an incident that happened up in Fayette County, and you've heard me on many of your shows talk about Fayette County, a lot of those areas mm -hmm. along the Chestnut Ridge where phenomena goes on year after year. And um, he had investigated an incident uh, where something was seen up there uh, on May 20th, again, around uh, right before midnight. And two people see this large, dark uh, creature cross the road in three steps, about 150, 200 feet away. And uh, there were some obstacles there, but they could see, they could only see the bodies from below the chest. They saw um, it was dark, arms were hanging down and swinging, legs were massive. They smelled a strange odor like decaying animal at the time. Mm -hmm. When they got up to the location, they put a light on the area, but they couldn't see anything. Uh, they went back the next morning with some researchers, and they found the area had all been trampled down. But more interestingly, right after it happened, there was some odd electromagnetic effects within the vehicle that they'd never, ever experienced before or after, right after it happened. And, you know, we've talked about this on your show. And as I've discussed over the years, uh, there's been some odd EM effects uh, reported with not only UFOs, but even with Bigfoot that many yeah. people never heard about. Mm -hmm. And um, in some cases, we've had incidents where Bigfoot ha have walked out in front of vehicles and the vehicle began to lose power. And as the creature moved off, the power came back and the car began to function again normally. In other cases, um, just like it goes out through with Todd, Sometimes researchers have had um, odd electronic effects going on um, with the various types of equipment, uh, cameras at the scene. So uh, that was, that's an interesting story as well. They know how to manipulate and, frequency and vibration, and that's what this is all about. So again, as we've discussed uh, previously, in my opinion, uh, those Sasquatch Bigfoot creatures are every bit as much supernatural as they are a physical being. So it would not surprise me one bit with these reports that you're getting, uh, you know, about cars being disabled or, or the, the engines being shut down almost or not functioning properly and, and things of that nature. Doesn't surprise me a bit. Well, as we've talked in the past, you know, my investigations going back in the early 70s is when I began to discover these strange cases, which began to suggest that Bigfoot was more than just an unknown flesh and blood animal. For a lack of a better term, I think we're dealing with something that's interdimensional. There's a physical and a non-physical aspect of the phenomenon. Yeah. It's very complex. The UFO stuff is connected to it in some ways, and the paranormal no stuff is, a lot of cryptid stuff, and I found more and more patterns, and I'm sure we'll talk about on the next show uh, when we get into it, but... Um, and then again, uh, other cryptid reports. We've had Thunderbird sightings in the area recently, some very close to where I live. And unfortunately, I didn't get to see anything. But um, there was a report on May 23rd, and this is in from downtown Greensburg, where I live. So it's only short distance away in the afternoon. And this witness that contacted me, this person, I can't go into great detail because we don't want to give out her identity, 
but she's worked with the wildlife of Pennsylvania. She's worked with the large birds of Pennsylvania, so she knows blue hair and eagles and turkey vultures and all yeah. these things. And she said, what I saw is something I'd never – she said, I was stunned. She said, this thing was huge with a wingspan, probably two car lengths long. Jeez. She said it was huge. It, it, it was all black in color, had a defined, elongated head with a sharp pointed beak and also a pointed protuberance at the back, back of the head. And she said it was completely featherless, appeared to be covered with leathery skin. The tail was straight, looked similar to a lizard's tail, but it seemed curled up at the bottom. And when the creature made a left turn in flight, um, she could see that, but she could not see its legs, which possibly were tucked underneath. And she said what caught her attention was the physical size of the creature in a huge way it was flapping its huge wings. He said when it would flap the wings hard at times and just glide through the sky, he seemed to notice that it flapped its wings extremely hard when making a turn. And um, she said also that it moved from Greensburg down towards South Greensburg. Well, interestingly, for years, we've had a history of, of Thunderbird sightings along busy highway route 119 and going out for miles outside of South Greensburg for whatever reason. And she Amazing. said, I'm hesitant to tell you this, but she said the closest thing that I could find to what I saw looked like a pterosaur. Mm. Dave, care to take a stab at that one? You know, listen, the world is changing. There's a lot of cool stuff going on around us. You got to keep your eyes to the skies, always be looking. I think these are gentle reminders that we can't take for granted the world we think we know. Yeah. And and exploring and seeing this. Listen, we know that there are new variations of species discovered every year, sometimes thousands of them. So to summarily dismiss it, say that it's just a bunch of crackpots and kooks that are seeing things, I, I think you've got, you know, that's a disservice to everybody involved. I agree. Uh, I think that it's always a great concept to just look at what's being said, look at what's being said, and now give you a reason. Listen, folks, how many of us have been stuck inside for 18 months? Get off off the couch, take your family and kids out and look at the skies, take them for yeah. a long walk. Who knows what miracles may be seen? And if we all start looking and looking past ourselves and to what other wonders are around us, we may not have to wonder if these things are paranormal or supernatural. They may be very natural. We've just been too absorbed to pay attention to them. Exactly. Exactly. It's very true. A lot of things goes on right above us or below us that we, you know, people in general don't take notice of because we're in a world now to where people are so self-absorbed. And uh, so I agree with what you're saying. If we could just take a step back outside of ourselves and just look around a little bit, we'd see a lot more things. And, and Stan, what else? Uh, what else is taking well, place in the area? There's actually more to that Thunderbird report because, interestingly, the next day, and actually, I'm typing up the report from that day before. A man calls me and asks me if I've had any reports of any strange, huge birds in the sky. And he tells me that he actually saw it only about a mile away from where the original witness saw it, but the day before her sighting. And wow. uh, he told me he was out walking his dog when he happened to look up that afternoon. And he said this thing was very high up. He said he estimated eight, 800 to 1,000 feet moving towards the west, but he said it was possibly black or dark gray in color, but the size and how it's moving was so unusual. He said, he said, I would estimate the wingspan to be 15 to 20 feet from wingtip to wingtip. And he said it never flapped or adjusted the pitch of its wings while he watched it. It just glided across the sky, continuing towards the west. He said the wings looked unusual. that they came back to points parallel with its body, and the tail seemed to just come to a point. He watched it for about 30 to 45 seconds, estimated it moved about two miles more out of sight among the trees. He never heard a sound as it passed overhead. So uh, that's kind of interesting, too. Could you imagine being on an airplane and you're flying on the plane and you look out the window and you happen to see something like that in the sky? Can you imagine? I mean, <laughs> just. I mean, being on the ground and seeing something like that a thousand feet up, you know, that's startling enough. But but being in an airplane, if something like that is in the proximity of where you're sitting on them, then you look out. I mean, I just can't imagine. And and there were some other Thunderbird reports that were coming in. And I have one case I'm working on from another part of the state. It happened this past April. It's a startling story. I'll, I'm still getting more information on it, and I'll probably be able to give you a better report on it. 
but it's an amazing Thunderbird story. Well, I mean, at this point, nothing surprises me. So uh, in this part of Western PA, and I've been through there many times, uh, there does seem to be a plethora of different activity taking place. And whether that is UFOs or Bigfoot or other cryptids, these Thunderbirds, whatever it may be, um, it seems to have been there, but yet uh, it also seems like right now that it's a flap, like it's increasing. So what would you say, Stan, uh, has this been for the last couple of months or you know, when did you start to get the influx in reports? Well, I wouldn't call it a flap as such because, again, I, I receive reports all year round, every year, all times of day and night. Um, and, yes, it's been interesting. I mean, this is nothing like what we experienced in 73 with that massive UFO Bigfoot outbreak. It went on for all year and months and months with the Bigfoot sightings. But I can tell you, again, going back to 2018, I mean, since 2018, for whatever reason, it's just been steady. With UFO, Bigfoot, cryptids, all kind of phenomena, 2018, 2019, 2020 through the virus, 2021 through the virus. And Amazing. the reports are just continuing. And, and then we've seen these series of little surges of reports, like in February and March and then in uh, June. And reports are still coming in the last few weeks of various things going on. So, yeah, interesting activity. Some of the reports are very detailed. We're getting in the last few years. We're getting some very weird cryptid reports, things that a lot of people have never heard about before. Mm -hmm. And um, so it's been a fascinating time, but something of interest is going on. And, uh, yeah. you know, we have these areas, like we talked with Todd, and we've been in touch with him. And there's those certain geographical locations that I started writing about this again back in the 70s that is similar to what's been reported at the Skinwalker Ranch. But it seems like this phenomena, for whatever reason, it seems to target or focus on certain geographical locations where you have an onslaught of various phenomena, from paranormal to UFOs and Bigfoot and cryptids and the small balls of light and other phenomena. And they it's can amazing. last hours, days, weeks, months, or years on the, at these locations. Absolutely amazing. And Dave, Derek uh, recently went out uh, on location with a friend of ours, uh, Todd Smith, uh, who I went to his house in uh, Rochester, New York, and performed a deliverance over him and, and the home in the area. Well, Todd has had, uh, it continues to have experiences with these Bigfoot Sasquatch creatures. And Derek actually went out there and, uh, and shot a documentary of it. So again, like Stan's saying, uh, there does seem to be these different places uh, around the, the country and the world that uh, has more of this type of activity taking place for whatever reasons. You know, it, it makes me wonder that what is really at play here? We've come to a part of our history where there's so much anger, hatred, resentment towards everybody. Everybody's emotions are uh, tangled and twisted. Mm -hmm. Are these sightings, are these things becoming more prevalent because we're being directed to get out of our own head and get out of our own way and start looking more at the wonders around us instead of the things that piss us off? Because right now, if you think about it, most people are so focused on that. Yeah. During the middle of a pandemic, a global pandemic, the government starts saying, okay, listen, we do have footage of UFOs. By the way, we do have footage and we have kept an ongoing research. Yeah, I know we said we shut it down, but they, you know, these things just kind of come out and, and it didn't grab everybody's attention, but it's been this slow, steady build. So are we seeing more of these creatures because A, we're all starting to get out of our own head or to draw us out of our space and realize that there's more going on than our own little petty issues? Yeah. I have a feeling we're going to find out soon. Uh, this, uh, for me, from where I'm sitting, and 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 you know, based on my cases and things that I see sometimes, uh, you know, that are around me, uh, I think that uh, we are heading for something. And so this is why I say over and over again, it is so important uh, for us to develop a real and authentic relationship with God. And you don't have to go to church to have God in your life and to make him first in your life. Look, if you want to go to church, it's a wonderful thing. 
to gather and worship and assemble in real praise and thanks of our glorious God. That's a great thing. But the church is right here. So we have to develop that real and authentic relationship with God first, and then you can go out from there. But I highly recommend it because of the times that we're in uh, that are some very unstable and uncertain times, and God will have an answer for all of it. But if we could stay uh, in a real and authentic relationship with God, we could keep our frequency and vibration as high as possible. And it's so important now because the world, all of life operates on frequency and vibration. And the devil knows this and he can manipulate those frequencies and vibrations. So it's very important to keep it on high. So I have a feeling, and like you said, Dave, you know, again, with this, uh, everything that's going on and now the non-revelation of disclosure that the government has just come out with, uh, I think we're on the cusp of something. I, I really do. So Stan, uh, what, do you have that same sense? Well, uh, I will, I think we mentioned this before, but the one pattern I found years ago and it's ongoing is that many close range, low level UFO encounters and encounters with Bigfoot and other cryptids commonly occur in the vicinity of high energy sources. Yeah. So you've got many sightings around high tension power lines, power plants, mm -hmm. radio communication yeah. towers, broadcast towers, railroad tracks, gas lines, gas wells. It goes on and on and on. There's definitely an energy connection to the phenomena. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. Derek, I know you had a question. I guess my, it was more of a statement for me because um, I could ask questions all day. We got Stan on here now, and then Dave, I could have just kept going on and on. Oh, there's going to be a part with, but, two um, a day, that's for sure. But, um, it, you know, just basically to generalize where we're at in conversation now, um, based off of what Stan Gordon just said about the power lines and the activity around uh, energy like that, um, I just believe that it's, um, uh, it's kind of a... And you guys know me you, from talking so much on these shows. We're, to me, it's insulting. We've been downplaying the the beings and the entities and the society around us for a very long time. And then we have these conversations. And you have experts like Dave and Stan that are documenting stuff. And, and we're like having this conversation like people are seeing these things. And then, then we're trying to justify whether or not, and, and Dave, you said it. Uh, Stan, you and I talk, you know, us, we all talk about this all the time. Everybody's not crazy. You can't just conclude that. So people are acknowledging what they're seeing and, and, and reporting it, right? So what's happening is, like Dave was saying, is it's it's been existing for ages, forever. We, we've all coincided forever, but we're just, we're, we're as us as the, as the indigenous species that is just here and seems as though we're at the top of the food chain, which we are, we just want to dis, uh, I don't know what's the word I'm looking for, but we don't want to fully acknowledge the fact that there are other life forms on this planet as we speak that have other abilities that we don't have. Chameleons can match the color of, of, of their environment. Can you do that? I can't do that. So how is that possible? We just got finished getting rid of the cicadas that come around every 17 years. You <laughs> explain God, that to me. You explain <laughs> that to me. What what creatures do you know that can just come around on time every 17 years and then last for a couple of weeks and then all of a sudden they're gone and then guess what? They'll be back in the next 17 years. Why why don't we want to acknowledge? What's already existing, but no, we're 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 the mighty human beings. We're the human race. We wanna, we're the best. We know everything. Nobody's better than us. We we're gonna determine what's real and what's not. And then everybody else that kind of has problems that people like us try to help, we're gonna say, oh no, you're crazy. You don't know what you're talking about. Well, that's not what I do. That's not what you gentlemen do. And I'm I'm just, you know, when I have these conversations with people like you who do this for a living. Okay, for a living, and you're all over public networks, and and you're telling people, and whether they want to believe or not, I'm gonna pick my side. I'm with you guys. I'm gonna help support. I'm gonna help the people that I can help. And just real quick here, Dave, because um, like I said, I'm behind on my questions. Um, I wanted to say this to you. So, um, do you do you think that um, the people in power 
that aren't named Bill Bean um, are just given a gift to help others. Now, this is people that mean good and then also people that mean evil. I think all those stories that you told, you have a you have a gift. You, everything you were saying, I have those same abilities. Mm -hmm. I, everything that I ask for, I get. People don't believe me. I, I tell people that I have special powers, but nobody believes me. And, I, and, you know, realistically, I should stop telling people that because I probably sound crazy. Everything I ask for, I get. I have a way of conjuring it up. And the only way to be able to do this is to be righteous to who I am at all times. I do not deviate. If I deviate, I'll lose it. And I, mm -hmm. I explain that to people at all times, right? Well, excuse me, at all the time. And all I have to do is just keep doing it. So I just believe I have a gift. I believe you have a gift, Bill, and, and people like Stan who are out there um, helping all the time and documenting and reporting, we have a skill set that maybe not everybody else has. However, since we have it, we have to help those who do not have it. And that's just all I'm going to continue to do. Now, I, you know, I hope I didn't um, go too far from my question, but again, my, just to ask my question again is, do you believe that, and this, this applies for both good and evil, so you don't have to be a, a deliverance minister, preacher, or reverend to, to have these abilities. And you know, there's a, there's not like a, you know a bill being a dime a dozen. So it has to be those with the gifts that we have that are helping others. So I'm sorry. What exactly is the question? That was a lot so, to unpack there. <laughs> I, I know, sorry, sorry. I apologize. So no problem. Do, do you do you believe that um, people in your position are put here to to help others? But you have to do, you have to accept what your abilities are. Now, that's just you. You mean well. Mm -hmm. I believe that there is, just like the yin and the yang, for every positive flow, there has to be a negative energy flow for it to coexist. You can't have one without the other. Do you believe oh, right. there's also the negative energy flow with sure. people that have those abilities that are going to try to counteract the positive, sure. positive flow? Well, Bill's been open about it. I'm open about it. We're, we're fallible humans. You know, we can right. try to be as, as good as we can. And it doesn't mean that I don't have extremely selfish moments where I, it's just about me and about my life. But right. again, th those instances are not what defines me overall. It's, all right, I made a mistake. That was stupid. I should have been a little bit more caring and understanding. What can I do to make sure that that doesn't happen again or that I can better somebody else's life so they don't have to live through something like that or deal with somebody like that? I've made mistakes and I've treated we people poorly. Yeah, I've treated people poorly and done some dumb things in the moment that I really regret later. But again, you take away from these as, as learning experiences. And maybe that's why, you know, and I'll, I'll, I'll throw this out there as a far woo conversation for Stan too. Um, maybe the reason we don't get full confirmation on Bigfoot and Chupacabra and, and the dog man is because God's saying, hey, Jerks, I gave you a platypus. It's a beaver with a tail <laughs> and a and a stinger and a gut bill. And you guys are like over it. I gave you a unicorn. You guys are all unicorn this, unicorn that. Why not? This is a unicorn. You idiots just wanted to have long flowing white fur and to look a certain way. There's your unicorn. I'm not gonna give you Bigfoot Chupacabra and Lock this awesome. because you morons will be over it in 10 yeah. minutes. Yeah. Right? That's what they did with the Jurassic World movie. They had yep. to create new dinosaurs because we got so eh, turn on a source Rex, big deal. <laughs> what else have you got for me? That maybe God's just like, I'm gonna keep these other ones, these really cool animals. I'll let you guys have little you know, flashes of seeing these things, but they're mine. You don't get to ruin this part. <laughs> well, Stan, well said, what do you well think of that? that? Stan, I think Dave brought great uh, little information there, and yeah, we just need to keep an open mind to all possibilities because nobody has the answers, and uh, I think someday when we find out, we're going to find out we're dealing with something that's far beyond our present scientific yeah. understanding. There's something that's out true. there, and we just don't understand it. Now, Stan, you've got to tell him uh, the, the number one story I think that you've ever told, and I, I read it in your book, too, is uh, you know that account, that time of the the two creatures coming up the fence line when the, the, the craft has landed, and then you've got the, the guy that's got the two kids with him, and he's got, uh, what was it, the 30-odd six or whatever? And, six. Yeah, you got to tell that story to Dave. Well, the, the short part of the story, because we could spend two hours or more just on part of the story, 
Um, that was October 25th, 1973, during that massive UFO Bigfoot outbreak in Pennsylvania. And, you know, when I was involved back in those days with Bigfoot, I mean, I was convinced that we we're done with an unknown primate, some type of unknown animal. And then these different cases began to come to my attention, 72, then mainly in 73, and ever since then. And uh, believe me, if I hadn't been out in the field doing firsthand investigation, I would have found it very hard to believe some of these stories myself. But when you got out to these areas, and many times we were on the scene within minutes to hours after they occurred, and you saw the emotion of the witnesses, sometimes the physical evidence, you see the animal reactions, you knew something was going on. But that particular case occurred again up in Fayette County. It was about uh, 1030 that night when I got a co phone call from a state trooper from the barracks, and he had just came back from investigating that multiple witness UFO landing. So there were about 15 people in that rural area to see this red barn-sized sphere about 100 feet off the ground slowly moving downward. So it's out in the country. And um, the, the main person involved was the son of the person on the farm who was coming out to visit his family. And he sees these people standing outside watching this thing coming down. He sees it. So he goes to a better location to get a better view. And he and two young neighbor boys watch this thing. It looks like it's landing on his dad's farm. So they decide they want to go up and see what this thing is. So they go over to his dad's farm. He grabs a 30 out 6 which is a high-powered weapon, and a handful of ammunition. And in that ammunition, which he didn't realize so later, we had two tracers. So uh, when you fire those tracers, you just get that luminous trail. As they're driving down the farm lane closer to the pasture, Dogs around the area are just barking and going crazy. They have those high-pitched whining noise and these baby crying sounds. And they finally, they angle their vehicle. They leave the headlights on to see a, a path to go up towards the, the uh, hill, up towards the pasture. And they notice that it looks like something's draining the power because the headlights are getting real weak. They've never had that experience before. They make their way up to the top, and there they're standing there in amazement about 250 feet away. This object is now on the ground or right above it. But now it's a big white dome, like a half a sphere, bright white, illuminating the whole area, making this high-pitched whirling sound. And they can't believe what they're seeing. So they're sitting there watching this thing. But then their eyes are attracted to a barbed wire fence about 60 feet away. Because along that barbed wire fence are these two tall, hair-covered, bipedal creatures one behind the other, slowly moving. One's about, the one in front's about eight feet tall. The one behind's about seven feet tall. These things have long, dark, matted hair hanging off the body. They have no neck. The arms are hanging down, past the knees, almost down to the ground. The eyes are large, about as big as a 50-cent piece, and they're glowing luminous green. They're making this baby crying, whining noise. And the one young boy is so scared, he runs out of the field. The other young boy starts yelling at the older fellow, shoot him, shoot him. So the guy fires his first shot, which turns out to be a tracer. He just got that luminous projection. He fires the second, uh, second tracer. And when he does, the largest of the two creatures reaches out with one of its hands as that it grabbed that tracer, makes a loud whining, crying sound. And that exact moment, that large luminous object in the field vanishes and disappears. That doesn't take off, it's just gone. Most of the luminosity is gone. The sound stops. The creatures turn around, start walking back along the fence line towards the woods. And the guy is now firing live ammo from the 30 odd six into the creatures. He had hunted for years. He told me until he passed away, he said, I'll never forget how that, that largest creature with his glowing green eyes just kept staring at me as I'm pumping live ammo into it with no, no. There was no reaction from it whatsoever. There was no damage to it. It was not hurt. No, no injury indicated. They just kept moving. And the two fellows ran out of the field, went back to their vehicle, went to the farmhouse, moved the family to a neighbor's, and called the state police. Just so amazing. The trooper, the I'm trooper sorry, arrived about, yeah, the trooper arrived about 45 minutes later. I'm here to investigate the incident, and this re and the fellow, the witness said, look, just forget about it. You're going to think I'm crazy. And the trooper said, look, we had a report of two similar creatures up on the mountain the night before I have to investigate the incident. So they go up in the troop car up to the area where it happened to look around for evidence. And the state trooper told me the area where the object was on the ground 
was self-luminescent and glowing, had 100 feet or more in diameter. He noticed that the farm animals wouldn't go anywhere near it. He told me, he said, if I had, he said, if I had a newspaper, he said, I could have sat down within that glowing area and read the newspaper from the glow coming off that wow. area. Well, anyhow, the short part of the story is they went back to the barracks. I was told the trooper and the witness were both separately taken to two separate rooms, separately interviewed, and then they called me to send up my team. When we got there uh, early morning hours. Within a few hours, we had to get – we got our team together. We'd sent our radiation gear. We had our uh, other equipment. The radiation levels, when we got on the scene, were completely normal. The glow was gone, but the animals wouldn't go near it. And then things got much stranger during the night. You've read the whole story, Bill, in my Silent Invasion book. It goes yeah. into great detail. Probably one of the strangest cases ever documented in the world. And uh, that was the case that convinced me and my team that we're dealing with something that's far beyond our understanding. Yeah, that's just a, a, an amazing, an amazing story. And I always think about it when Stan's on with us. And uh, Dave, I don't know if you've ever heard that story before, but uh, boy, just an amazing account. That's astounding. Uh, that yeah, that would, if you were not a believer before, that would be something that would put you onto a whole new righteous path. That's for sure. <laughs> and look, brother, I know that you have to go, and uh, I can't thank you enough for have spending, you know, to to spend the time to take the time because you don't have a whole lot of time. But thank you for taking the time to uh, to be with us here. And I hope that you'll come back. I certainly will. Thank You're you welcome. guys all You're for having me on anytime. I'd love to, and we'll uh, we'll connect again. Um, and for your yeah. listeners, if they're interested, I've I've been hosting Darkness Radio. Don't let the title fool you. Uh, we're uh, you know pretty light and lighthearted when we do our our shows, but we treat it with respect um, and admiration for the the strange and the supernatural. So people can check us out on just about any. Um, podcast tool that you use just look up darkness radio and you'll see scully the the uh, image behind me uh as our image you could to, to get that i also have if people are interested i've got a cool little uh, package i'm offering up for a very limited time i've got my book the other side a guide to ghost hunting and the paranormal autographed also a holzer files card that i'll autograph uh and then we have a darkness radio decal that you can put on your favorite vehicle your laptop whatever we got the full kit is 20 bucks plus five bucks shipping and handling if you're interested, just email me, Dave, at darknessradio.com. That's Dave, at darknessradio.com. And I will uh, have my wife send you an invoice via PayPal, and we'll get it out to you as soon as possible. So thank you guys for letting me plug my book and, and decal deal and for spending Anytime. some time talking with uh, fellow uh, travelers and believers in, in the unusual and amazing. So thank you guys for these couple of hours. It's been great. Thank it's been you, fantastic. Dave. Fantastic. Uh, Kevin, yes. it's far exceeded uh what i thought it was gonna be oh it's been everything i hoped it would be and then some thank you very much dave yeah it's been thank my pleasure you, dave. thank you all stay that safe great, and stan man. we got to get you on the show again stan it's been a while all right we'll be uh we'll be glad to schedule something for you great thank you all take care be safe love one another and always be kind remember that's the most important thing we are all the same we are just coming from it from different perspectives so show kindness you're always going to see much further uh by giving kindness than you will by being blind and, and showing rage so let the warrior mode continue on my friends take care love, love and god bless you family my brother thank you again so uh stan i wish you could have been with us to the whole time because it's really been a great show but man I'm, I'm glad that you uh took time out of your busy schedule to uh come in here with us as well well thanks for having me on and uh, there's a lot of new information on my website uh stangordon.info uh contact information on there but i can be reached at uh paufo at comcast.net i can be contacted directly at 724 Eight three eight seven seven six eight, and my books are available on Amazon.com and BarnesandNoble.com. And if all goes well, I'm hoping within the next two to three months they have my fourth book out. Fantastic! And congratulations! I'll be getting a copy of that. Yep, you'll be getting a copy. Thank you, my brother. God, much love and God bless you and your family. And Stan, we look forward to you coming back with us on August eighth. Uh, you're you're always welcome on this show. So if you have uh, any new fresh information that you want to talk about, just reach out to me, and we will again put you right back on. And uh, we're we're always interested to hear what you have to say. 
Well, I appreciate that very much. Uh, thanks very much, and always enjoy being on the show. All right, my brother. We'll talk soon. All right, Stan. Have All a right. good one, man. Thank you, Thank you, Stan. Thank you. Kev, I'm going to borrow your word from you. Epic. Oh, uh -huh. beyond epic. Beyond epic today, <laughs> Bill. Um, that should be the title of a show, Kev. We should host a show <laughs> beyond epic. That's it, right. it, it's got it's like wow that had everything today right i mean yes. it's like i said to travis it's like literally sitting speaking to a legend you know yeah. it, this is pretty pretty good stuff and i know the audience really appreciated it as well it, they seem to yeah that's fantastic and uh you know when you Combine and we had to gingerly combine that there because we certainly wanted to give Dave his time to uh, to talk and questions that we had, but we also wanted to bring our good friend Stan on. So I mean, these are two legendary individuals that uh, uh, we enjoy having on, and we'll have Dave on again, I'm sure. Uh, and Stan will be back with us on August eighth. But uh, it just everything that was said there was just uh, amazing and it, it will go down as one of the uh, best shows that we've done to date. Yes, to date. Just to yeah. date. Because yeah. we will continue to raise the bar around here. And I tell you what, Dave Schrader, oh, wow. talk about yep. warrior mode. Yeah. Um, that was in it. pretty inspirational stuff. Amazing. It really was. And uh, he could have taken a totally different uh, way uh, with other content that he could have talked about on the show. But uh, I am really, really glad that he chose uh, to talk the way that he did and speak on the topics that he did, because it was very uplifting and inspiring. And I pray that a lot of people out there who were tuning in found it uh, to be just that. What do you think, guys? Travis, Derek? I, I'm still blown I, away. Go ahead, Travis. No, I no. I, you talk because I'm speechless. So, I mean, I mean it, you know, I, I was telling Kev in in uh, a, a private message when we have guests the caliber of the Stan Gordons and the Lon Stricklers and the Dave Schraders. We don't have to give them talking points. We don't have to script these shows. Everything just meshes into that warrior mode mentality and, and mantra and platform. The, these are people that you would not normally have talking about a lot of the aspects of these topics that they talk about on this show. But when they get with the four of us, it just flows naturally it's fluid they're they're open they're they're they actually bear themselves they 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 kind of open up mentally and spiritually and psychologically and we get a glimpse of them that you don't get in like as, as dave was saying in a 42 minute tv show where that they're editing and splicing and cutting we don't do that everything is live here even when i knock my phone off the tripod like i did in uh, earlier on, <laughs> I mean, you know, it's like I, it I, just I, I, occurred I was, and we kept rolling. I was moving my my hand and it caught the cord and it just popped right up. That's so no, it, and, it, and we kept we didn't skip a beat. We kept well, rolling. We, yeah. and, and you know, when we when we all dropped off and we yeah. and 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 Kev was trying, you know, I was still watching the YouTube. We never dropped viewers we never dropped listeners we stayed above a hundred because they're engaged them they engage themselves on yeah. that YouTube chat and they're waiting for us to come back and that's that's a true mark of success of the 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 validity of a show if you can keep your listeners during a technical meltdown and a, and a technical problem a meltdown is the correct term i was having a meltdown <laughs> i was we having a back. conniption fit i want to do something real quickly kev i want to introduce the world to can you guys see him not quite not go yet. down further further there we go there he is hey. Hey. That, that is cashew Cashew. Cashew. Cash, wow. cash, wow, there, there he is. Cash for short. Oh, this oh. is this is my my rescue. Uh, he he nice. needed a home. 
his, his owner died and he was no one wanted him and he was uh mentioned uh my ex-wife works with the organization that had him uh as a as a, a an emergency rescue so i uh I spent six hours round trip today, drove and, and picked him up and we're going to, I'm going to foster him for a little while. And we're going to see if we can make this work out. That's awesome. That's brother. Awesome. That really is. Yes. And again, talk about miracles. Here we go again. I mean, this is uh, a dog that needed to be rescued and you have stepped up and done just that. So praise God. Yeah. Thank you for doing that. Travis. Yeah. Awesome. God bless you, brother. That's, that's Christ-like again. I mean, these are the examples that uh, Jesus gave us to live by, and uh, you can either do it or not. Uh, we have free will, so we're free to make our choices so we can do it or not. But when we do it, there's tremendous blessing behind sure. that. So those blessings just continue to move on and move on and move on. So it's great. That's wonderful. And Travis, uh, I hope that it is uh, just a really, really good situation for you, and it's a tremendous I blessing. I know it will be for cash. Uh, I, I hope so too. It's going to be going to be fun to, to have somebody you know to hang out with. I so. <laughs> love it. Yeah, I wanted to uh, piggyback off of what Travis said, and uh, this show is is like no other, and it's um, the way it 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 provides unity amongst us as yeah. as a panel, also uh, the viewers. Uh, if you notice. Dave Schrader, he he got emotional. You don't you don't really see you don't really see a lot of uh, people get like that on other shows. They just they're on there. They just want to talk about what they're there to talk about. It but doesn't we get have deep. a way. Yeah, it doesn't get yeah. deep like that. He went off into things, and you know when I have my opportunity to to speak again, it was just like it's like I want to say so much, and I'm I'm all over the place. And I want to say so much, and but. You only have limited amount of time, but um, a lot of what I wanted to say to him had we have had the time was would have been pertaining to all of that personal content that he divulged tonight. And um, it's just something that this show does. Uh, everybody that comes on there and buy warrior mode mentality and like uh, Travis said, the mantra of what we do. Yeah. Um, it's and just, it's just you, amazing. Eric, that it's just that amazing. wouldn't be his uh, standard interview content. Heck no. no. Heck no. no. Heck no. Not the stuff that he was talking about. Heck no. He would not have been talking about that on a regular show. And no. this this show is, I mean, we do pretty good numbers. So a lot of people had a, a real luxury to watch that man uh, actually um, give up information like that about his personal life and things that are going on and, you know, what he believes and uh, cover it from top to bottom in that short period of time. So uh, big shouts out to him, man. And you know, always, we, we love Stan Gordon. Stan oh, yeah. comes on. He he uh, cuts right to the chase, and he's uh, he's awesome as well. But He's, um, he's a nonstop fountain of information, that's for sure. Like, yeah. yeah. So, so that's... So how can you lose? You can. It's all win-win. I mean, that, you know, this entire show from top to bottom is win-win. There's no losing in it. Not when you have content like that. Yeah, absolutely. So once again, another fabulous Warrior Mode show. And I got to find my Warrior Mode shirt, man. I can't find my Warrior Mode. Actually, I got to order a couple more shirts. So I need some more shirts, man. We I'll haven't rocked our Warrior Mode shirts. Matter of fact, I think you were the last one to wear your Warrior Mode yep. shirts. You're right. So, so you got got to get back at it. Yeah, we he's need shaming us, Travis. So he's he's shaming us, man. He's warrior yeah, mode shaming us. Let's just go ahead and say we're gonna wear them next Sunday night. Everybody wears yeah, the warrior we'll mode. Yeah, we'll wear it. We'll wear it. Right, we'll we'll try. I'm we'll looking, try. Right. I'm looking diligently. So listen, <laughs> Bill. How about you take us in to the prayer yeah. list? Over to you, yeah. brother. Boy, Kev, I'm worried about your rest here. Here it is, uh, you know, two forty. Sorry, I, I streamed for eight hours the other day in preparation oh, for the prayer oh. list. It's like it's like social media fasting. Instead of giving it up, Kev actually puts himself out there to yeah. stream for eight hours. Yeah, just to prepare for the the, the prayer getting list. that Olympian yeah. kind of mode that you need, man. I'm telling you. <laughs> 
And, and the thing about it on this show, he kind of takes a like a, a, a step back, a seat back. On his other shows, oh, he's covering so much material. Because I've got to look after like, you three guys on here, you know? <laughs> how did he do that, bro? Like, he is place, man. The man is a true genius. But, you know, hey, I'm pretty sure you guys agree with me, but I, I, I see it for myself, and I'm like, how is this man able to do that as often as he does it? And then Come Sunday, the end of the week, the weekend, which is really the end of the week, start of a, a week, start of the week, he, you know, navigates this whole show. So no, I love it. I don't. I still haven't worked out if it's the best way to round off a week or start the new week. But at the right. end of the day, it's, it's both. It's the combination right? it's of both. both. Yeah, exactly. Over yeah, to so, you, Bill. So Cavs a true Olympian uh, in in every sense of the word. So he's always ready and always prepared. So. Again, we praise God for that. Courage, brother. That's right. That's exactly right. And and when you're in that type of mode and living that type of way, these are not just words. This is a true lifestyle. And if you could get into that, your life won't become perfect, but I guarantee you it will improve greatly. So it's something to consider. Uh, so this week's prayer list, uh, we'll, we'll start again with you, Kev, as we always do. Uh you told me that you've had a good week health-wise. Praise God yep. for that. But we'll continue to pray for a complete healing miracle for your lungs or if there is uh, some type of transplant or whatever that takes place, something that is going to give you uh, quality health stability to where you can move forward and not have to worry about if you're going to have a bad day or a bad week or whatever health-wise. So we will continue to pray for a complete healing miracle for you. And we'll continue to pray for your family as well. And thank God that uh, your mom, Pearl, is uh, doing well and hi, Pearl, and hi, Mr. and Mrs. Short, uh, you Mrs. Know, Stroman. You know, Bill, think about that, though, for a moment. Um, I, I hate talking about myself, but we talk about warrior mode. Um, like My lungs are below 50% what they should be. Yeah. And yet here I am day after day, Hour after hour, still trying to get information out to people. And it's well, not to make that about myself, but when I think about it, I shouldn't be able to do that. But this like, is I what shouldn't God physically does. be able to do that with the way my lungs are, but somehow I do. So it's not magic, it's warrior mode. Yeah, so, warrior mode. I agree. And God is working through you to get information out, to give you the strength and the energy and the stamina to be able to do eight hours. Uh, on a broadcast like that and then come back and do we're, we're headed for three hours now on this deal um, this is by the power of God that you can do these things because under normal circumstances with a person having the health issues that you have I don't think that would be possible absolutely you're brother. an incredible man you're yeah. an incredible man Kev Baker you are it's true I'm a little choked up man. I love you man you, love you too, stay bro. strong bro yeah. Kev and Baker is a mere man. Ahead, he is, I'm sorry. He is a beast. I said, Kev Baker is more than a mere man. He is a beast. Yeah. Yes. I like that. Beast beast. This is, uh, again, with God, all things are possible. He makes the impossible possible. So if you have, you know, doctors saying that, hey, you're in a grave situation, uh, it's this, it's that, in Kev's case, uh, under 50%, just think about that for a second, 50, under 50% 50 lung capacity and breathing capabilities. I mean, that is, I, I couldn't fathom that. I mean, that is, uh, you know, that, but yet there he is, he's continuing on and he's doing his part. So God does his part. We have to do our part as well. So our part is remaining in faith. And, and commitment to God in that committed relationship with him, trusting him. And it's difficult to trust, especially when you're going through a situation like Kev's going through. It's difficult to trust. But if you can trust in God and know that he is there and he's going to make a way and everything's going to be okay, then suddenly you can do things that are deemed impossible. And that's what Kev's doing. And good for you, Kev, and we praise God for it. Thank you, brother. So we'll, 
will go on now, and uh, uh, my stepdaughter, Melanie, still having shoulder issues. We'll uh, continue to pray for her healing in her shoulder. Um, and my uh, brother-in-law, Tommy Diggs, uh, has had uh, recently, uh, over the last few days, had uh, open-heart surgery, and we uh, pray for a complete healing miracle for him. Uh, my cousin Jim had uh, the sinus uh, surgery. We pray for healing for him. Uh, continue to pray for Melinda, who has made miraculous uh, progress, and Pat Duran as well. We've prayed for her for her knee, and she is making a, a wonderful uh, strides and, and getting around now. Praise God for that. Uh, we pray for Jay. We pray for Sylvia. We pray for Anita Johnson, Mr. and Mrs. Hart. Um, Bob and Jen, and then my cousin John Harvey and his wife Bev, uh, continue to pray for them. Uh, they have had struggles and issues, and again, I've mentioned it before, and it's worth mentioning again. Uh, my cousin John Harvey is a walking miracle. He shouldn't be here. Uh, we'll have to really dig into this story on one of our shows. Uh, John and I were at a party years ago, I don't know, probably 35. 36, 37 years ago, whatever. Uh, and he went to get alcohol. He, he was going to go to the liquor store. He asked me to, to go with him to the liquor store to get more alcohol. And I said, yeah, okay. Uh, and then all of a sudden, I know it was God, stop me. And I said, no, I think I'm gonna just stay here. And John took four other people with him to the liquor store. This was unbelievable. I mean, I, I was going. I had agreed to go. And then suddenly I just stopped. Something in my spirit, I, it was God stopping me. And these other people went. And uh, to make a long story short, John had a horrific car accident. He should have died. And the other people were seriously injured as well. Uh, they uh, had a head-on accident. He, he was in like a Chevy Vega, a four-door Chevy Vega that collided with a van. And the van flipped the car over, and literally, uh, as it flipped over, somehow the van ran John's, uh, I think it was his left arm, ran it over. He's got rods and bolts and plates in him. You just wouldn't believe it. And like Kev, he never complains. He continues to go, move forward. Uh, you know, someone like this, A, shouldn't have lived, and B, with all the hardware in him, it, it would be impossible for him to function in a normal capacity, but yet that's what he does. And he works hard, continues to work. Uh, I, I have great respect and admiration for him that uh, he could very easily say, I'll just collect disability. And uh, that's it, And but he doesn't, he works hard, and uh, boy, I tell you, uh, he is a walking miracle. And so uh, hats off to my cousin John, and, and he does have aches and pains and problems, physical ailments from time to time, but he doesn't let it stop him, and he continues to move forward. So he is a great success story, a walking miracle for sure, and we praise God for that. Um, uh, we'll continue to pray for uh, uh, John and Inga, and, and John is making improvements from a terrible fall. Uh, we pray for Mike, we pray for Tia, we pray for Brian, Dave Coleman and his family, uh, Walt and Pam Lohman, John and Dee Bosley, uh, Pastor Jonathan Cobb and his family, Pastor Jason Morlock and his family, um, Tim Diaz and his family, uh, Steve Hodgson and Jen. Hodgson, uh, Jade, uh, Raylan Clark, Rachel Gecko, uh, Deborah Guayo, Kim Mailer, uh, Heather Sanchez and her family, uh, Ricky Richardson, uh, Deneen Dorsey, John Downs and his family, Amanda and Farah, uh, Lene Devon and their family, uh, Velma Matthias and her son James Waltrip, uh, Good buddy Tim Shaw, Rachel Ty will continue to pray for Rachel. How's she doing, Travis? Doing very well. Uh, she goes back, I think, in August, Bill, for the next checkup, but uh, she could not be doing better. And I Fantastic. just I appreciate the prayers uh, by you, uh, by the other three horsemen, and by everyone that follows Warrior Mode. Thank you all so much. Fantastic. Well, we'll continue to keep her in prayer. And like Kev, we'll continue to pray. Uh, until we know that she's completely 100% clear from everything, and we praise God for it. She's on her way, 
and it's great to hear. And we'll also pray for uh, Lisa Marie Kennedy, um, uh, one of you guys, I don't know if it was Kev or you, Travis, that sent that over in the uh, chat. And uh, Louis Ta uh, needs prayer as well. We, we pray for Louis. Um, Krista Welch, Peter and Donna, um, Frank Hutchinson, Doris, Linda Blackman, Tina Marie, Polly Brewster. And Tina Marie is another uh, person that uh, has a warrior spirit. You know, she's been battling this breast cancer and uh, she's come through again. And uh, she had made a posting that she's clear and we praise God for that. So good for you, Tina, and keep moving forward. And um, you'll never lose. You you know you're in warrior mode, and you keep God first in your life. So He's going to bless you, and He's going to help you through through anything and everything. We praise God for it, and we pray for her wonderful mom, Polly Brewster, who's always tuning into the show. Uh, Alice Buck, her dad, Thomas Johnson, uh, who's battling leukemia and skin cancer. Uh, Margie Rayner, uh, Valentina and her family, Celeste Hogan. Uh, Dream Dawn and their family, Serenity Moore, uh, Yolanda, uh, Rebecca Barker and her family, Joe Moyer, Deborah Walker, uh, Terry and Taylor uh, Kay in Detroit, um, Deborah Denise and her family and, and uh, her sister Cynthia and the loss of her other sister. We're very, very sorry and we continue to pray for Deborah and her family. Uh, Ken Fields, the Bergstrom family and the Nuno families uh, in Chicago. And we pray that uh, Isidro and Shannon are improving. Um, Steve Wolf and his wife Ricky and their family in Baltimore. Uh, Kathy Smith and uh, her family, her husband Ron. She had sent me a message saying that her husband Ron was recently involved in an auto accident. And we pray that Ron is okay. And we continue to pray for her brother Ron, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Virgil Chick, Josh and Kara. And Josh, thank you. Uh, for that wonderful um, uh, illustration that you had sent over. I really, truly appreciate it. And thank you and Kara and your mom, Linda, and continue to pray for all of you. Um, Dave and Shar and their family, Regina and her family, Scott Colax, Johnny Johnson, Kathy John and their family, uh, David and Rachel and their children, uh, Rachel's mother, Pearl Morrison, uh, Frank and Cheryl and Faith and their family, um, Dr. Rudolph Garza and Mary, uh, Roxanne Powers, um, congratulations, Roxanne, uh, on your new place to live. They should be living soon. Praise God for that. Jim Marinos, uh, Bart Carlucci, Todd Smith, Mason Smith, Trevor Esman, Jerry Schwartz, Joyce Tomlinson, um, Travis and Debbie Garver. Bruce and Mary Collier, Sue Beckner and her family, James Woodward, Andy Woodward, um, Mike and Sandy Woodward, Fred uh, Perigo and Gail Haney, Rhonda Brown, Rhonda Smith, Jan Woodward and her family and her cousin Julie and friend Julie in Belgium, Casey Kern and family, Mario Mithril, uh, Michael Ann Peace, Helen Carr, Kim Stein, Alyssa Colliano, Dolores Spina, um, Joe and Mercedes would continue to keep them and Mark and their family in prayer. Um, and they're doing well. Uh, the last I've heard, we praise God for that. And, and may you guys continue to move forward. Uh, Anthony and uh, Dina Holmes, Sean Jason Medley and his family, Kimberly and Brianna Offman, George Brooks, Rudy and Louise, uh, Sal and Denon and their family, Summer Eastwood, Kevin Corum, Karen Matz, Randy Cooksey and his family, Dana Valentine, Heather Smith, Tanya McCullough and her family, Wayne Beck, Tom Walker de Jarvis, Kelsey Lavely, Robert D. Bartolomeo, Sandy Pace, Brad and Grace Shaw, Deb Hoffman, Carolyn Spencer, Terry Todd, Anna Todd and their family, Jim and Anita Harlow and their family, Jim Drysdale, Frank Smith and his family, uh, Tina Foster, Macy Artrip, Mark and Laurie Vault, Chris Weddle, Sherry Webb, Ingrid and her family, uh, Patricia Jackson, Patricia Joyce, Amber and Kirsten Kingsley, Les Brennan, Mark and Paula Anstein, Paula Gillen and her children, Kathy Higgins, Dana Emanuel, Mary Dowling, Jim Kelly and his mom, Greta Kelly, and cousin Susan Kelly. Uh, we pray for healing miracles for all of them. Ginger Gutierrez, Jose Velez, Linda Velez, Cheryl Velez, uh, Luz Maria, 
Charles Nelson, uh, Vernilda Velez, Linda Combs, Gary Blyer, Rebecca Roxbury, Larry Franklin, Matt and Carrie McBride and their children, Tom Martin and his family, Melody Braun Merson, Cheryl Rundles and her family, Christopher Lang, Danielle Killer, Darlene Gatton, Randall Napier, Linda Boak, Chase Williams, Jordan Bell Shields, Otis and Valerie Shields, Deb uh, Devorah Byer, um, Lydia and her family. Dave Schrader made mention of Lydia earlier in the interview. A wonderful person, and I'm overjoyed for her that she is moving forward in her life. Praise God. Uh, Janet Valentine, Mary Strickland, Henry and Casey in East Tennessee, Joseph Sicanti, uh, Kenny and Angie, Geraldine Mitchell, Ann Perez, Danielle Keeler, Lisa Kirk, Lisa Marie Daniel, Katie Smith, Rose Smith, Anna Lee Smith, Cassie Smith, Lacey Adams, Sheila Joyce, Kenny and Dawn, Chris Shee, Chester Holland, Chester Ray Holland, Vernie Holland, Stephanie Baker, Michael Baker, Darlene Baker, Helen Baker, Whitney Best, Lisa Best, Roy and Elba Johnson, Alex Mosley, Linda Combs, uh, who is unfortunately going through kidney failure, and we pray uh, for complete healing miracle for her. Uh, Brock Duncan, Sandy Mullins, Crystal Roberts, Diane Riley, Derek Federici and his family, Brian Foy, uh, and six-year-old Noah Foy, uh, Ben Morales and family, Mary Bess, Harry, Anna, Brian, Carmen, Elizabeth and their children, Pastor Ramon Creech and his family, Nancy Griffith, Tyler Griffith, Linda Napier, Hub Bowling, Mr. and Mrs. Jean Hill, Doris, Russell, Paul, Jonathan Johnson, Ed and Gail Cover, Joyce Baldessere, Rita Starlet family, Deb Hoffman, Doug and Aaron King, Louisa Winston, Nia Jiler, B. Ingsrichton and family, Heather Lucas and Joshua Jura, Carolyn Byrne, Tina Smith, Michael and Glenda, Carrie Ann, Thaddeus Eisner and Monica Anton and their family, Helen Baker, Rose Baker, Donna Wood, Ginny Arrowwood, Ben Gentry, Dennis Hunt and his family, Christine Gonzalez, Maria Hagar Gonzalez and her family, Demetrius Wood, Donna Dormany Wood, Rose Pressey, Bobby Owens, Danny Wayne and Barb Holland, Savannah Holland, Janet Banks, Billy Owens, Jennifer Owens, who is battling cancer, Mike and Angie Begley, Elmer Gabbard, Shirley Begley, Kevin Kimberly, Kelly Brandy and Cody Cockrell, Vernon Begley, Vicki Parker and her son Bradley Eversole, Larry Begley and uh, Mavis Seller, Bill Mosley and Donnie Mosley, uh, Thelma, Rachel Mosley, Wanda Hamlin Johnson, Morgan Johnson, Savannah Baker, Prentice Begley, Randall Napier Sr., Diana Napier, Richard Everidge, Harold Smith, Bill, Charlie Miller, Pastor Buddy Turner, Rose Smith, Maggie Bowling, Margie Van Pelt and her family, Alicia Akers, Libby Smith and her family, Jason Mars, Christian Carpenter, uh, Tony Walker, Angela Horton, Rhea Jean Roxbury, Lisa Marie Knox, Joanne Gill, or Gail, I'm sorry, Carmine Budificoli, uh, Melvin and Crystal Gross, Pastor Doug White, Karen Lowry, Shandria Gibbons, Junior Aravalo and his family, Francis Ozzy, Don Geary, Paul Nevin, Elizabeth Hankins, Lorna Thompson, Sylvia Cortez, Lisa List, Julius, Sharon Barefoot, Dan Kulik and his family, Lauren Miori, Holly Martinson, Jamie Contreras and his family, uh, Dave Longacre, who's recovering from open heart surgery, uh, Robin Edgar, Anthony and Celeste Ortega and their family, uh, Paul Pades, who's battling lung cancer, Mike Jeremiah, Michelle Ellers and family, Caleb Ellers, uh, who's very ill, 19-year-old Caleb Ellers, um, Mary Lynch, Sven Lesser, Bob Barber, Kathy Falk, Carol Arnold, Dave Giuliano, Carrie Fitzpatrick, Wendy Douglas, uh, specifically her son and sister, uh, three-year-old Bella, who is in the hospital, uh, unfortunately diagnosed with lymphoma, uh, Tim B., Dolores Casanova, who is in Nicaragua, um, last I heard is still in a coma. Uh, she has brain cancer and a heart problem as well. Uh, Bill and Barbara Savino, Bill is battling cancer. 
uh, Annette Clark, congestive heart failure, Richard and Lynn Donahue, Marnie Ryder, VJ Begley, Michael Dwayne Begley, retired clergyman Ronald Fail Enright, Pastor Chris Fugate at Gospel Light Baptist Church in Hazard, Kentucky, Sherry Smith, Stella Coldiron, Robin Cullen, Mamie Hauser Scrag, Julie Zaffis Marin, Nancy Griffith, Michael Hendis, Carolyn Gruss, Teresa West, Pastor Stephen Simfuma. Sad news here. We prayed for him for the last several weeks. He was making improvements, but unfortunately, I'm sorry to uh, report that he has passed from COVID. And uh, uh, thank you to Roger Garza for uh, informing me of uh, Pastor Sinfuma's uh, passing. And we pray that God will bless and comfort his uh, family and loved ones during this most difficult time. Uh, Lachelle Scott, who's battling cancer. Uh, Pastor Doug Testerman. Um, Robin Cullen, uh, baby Priscilla Sagawa. And she's been very, very sick, but is improving, praise God. Uh, Mary Herbert Cox, Bridget uh, Servi, 17-year-old Daniel, Kathy S. in Virginia, Joshua in Ontario, Canada, John Jaden Tyler and David Duncan, Teresa Sanderson, uh, Lynn Goladet Dolan, uh, her younger cousin Lisa has passed away, and we certainly pray for uh, healing for uh, Lynn and her family, blessings and comfort and healing. 16-year-old um, Avery uh, in Tennessee has a large mass uh, on her lung. Uh, Joe in Arkansas has lung cancer. Mark Brewer in Arizona um, is continuing to pray for his wife, Cindy, who they believe uh, has both cancer and heart failure. We pray for a healing miracle for her and for everybody on this list. Um, Pamela Fleming, uh, she wants us to pray for David M., who is in the UK. He's currently in the hospital with heart failure and waiting to receive a heart. Um, Michael Ware and his family, his son was uh, involved in a terrible tragedy. Uh, he was in a bar and got into an argument with someone, and uh, that individual followed him out and, and killed him. So I'm very, very sorry to hear that. Uh, Richard Allen Bennett, uh, we pray for the um, people in Arizona. Uh, we pray that God will bring some rain or help the firefighters. There's 23 different wildfires raging in Arizona currently. Uh, and I certainly pray that uh, God will help those people with some rain to put those fires out. Um, also, the poor people in the northwestern part of America are suffering greatly. Uh, the normal temperatures for this time of the year in the northwest, uh, places like Seattle and Portland, um, those temperatures are in the 70s normally. And these people are having, sorry, Kev, to borrow this word from you again, but it is epic heat of epic proportions. Uh, so you're in a region that is normally in the 70s uh, during this time of the year. Now they are seeing temperatures upwards to 117 degrees. Jeez. So uh, I pray for these people. Send this it is to awful. Glasgow, Bill. Tell, tell, send that weather to Glasgow. We would love some of that. <laughs> we would. Oh, I have, uh, I think the hottest I've ever been in was like 108, 109, and I'll tell you what, uh, it takes your breath. Ugh. And and lastly, uh, we pray for the, uh, this really, really has affected me. Um, I'm heart sick for these people in Miami that the, uh, the condo building that collapsed uh, a few days ago, um, there are still uh, the last report that I saw, there's still over 150 people missing uh, in this damage, and it is gut-wrenching. It's heartbreaking to see families and loved ones of these people that are missing and that are in, more than likely, in that debris and rubble. Uh, it's just got to be an 
awful thing to be there on scene and standing there presuming that your loved one uh, is in the rubble. I read one story. Uh, this man said that he was on the phone with his wife right before this happened. And she was out on the balcony and she screamed and that was it. Uh, he didn't hear any more and she has not been found. And uh, my goodness, can you imagine your your last contact with your wife, you know, your significant other, and it ends in that way. So I certainly pray for that man. I pray for all of these people that have been affected by this terrible tragedy, and I pray for their families as well. So that is our um, endless prayer list for this week. And uh, again, even though it is, it is a tremendous list, if you're in need of prayer, don't hesitate. You can contact any of us, and we will uh, put you on this list. And if you feel that, uh, you know, it's something that is beyond uh, what we do here as far as uh, our prayer and you, you need physical help, then don't hesitate to reach out. I'm very busy, but not too busy to help anyone. So uh, just reach out. You can email me directly from the site, and I will get back to you. Um, so I want to thank again the people that donate to this ministry on a regular basis. I truly, truly appreciate it from the bottom of my heart. I truly appreciate it. Uh, and these people regularly donate, and God bless all of you. Much love. I truly appreciate it, and I pray every time when a donation comes in that God will bless each donor many times over for their act of kindness. And so we start with Melinda, uh, who's not only my assistant, but is a major, has been a major contributor to my ministry. Sylvia, Amy Counts, uh, Roxanne Powers, Ray Mossy, Andrew O'Neill, Jim Kelly, Sandra Clark, Alice Marie Buck, Marcy Robbins, Roger Garza, Jan Woodward, Frank Bodeck, Lonnie Hughes, Lisa Robbins, Mary Best, Johnny Cummings, Eddie Hughes, and I pray, uh, just like we pray for everybody on the list, I pray for them and their families as well. May God continue to bless them with everything that they are needing. We got two happy birthdays. Uh, Sandra Nuno, my dear friend uh, and her family out there at Chicago, and we've got, uh, we'll have an announcement uh but involving and pertaining to Sandra and her family that uh, a recent shoot that I did. And once I get the green light to be able to talk about it, we'll talk about that. And it's uh, something that will be coming up on network TV. And, and uh, it should be uh, a very, very compelling story to say the least. So in the coming weeks, when I have the green light from the production company to talk about it, we'll talk about it. Uh, so happy birthday, Sandra and Kathy Moore. Um, and now we'll go to the seven declarations. Uh, just repeat after me. If you want to do this and you want to strengthen, develop or strengthen uh, your relationship with God, then repeat after me. Praise God for this day. I declare victory in this day. I declare that no weapon formed against me shall prosper. I declare that everything that I do and everything that I touch will be successful. I declare perfect health in mind, body, and spirit. I declare to be a blessing to others and a shining example of God's love, mercy, and goodness. I declare, Father, to have your favor, your blessing, and your prosperity for life. Glory to you forevermore in Jesus' name. And then our 10 steps. Step one is making God first in all things. Step two is following the path and the teachings of Yahshua, Jesus the Christ. Step three is building your faith. Step four is forgiveness. Step five is finding your purpose in life. Step six is using the power of positive thinking. Step seven is setting goals. Step eight is giving to others. Step nine is being grateful for everything. And step 10 is warrior mode, walking in that level of faith, strength, and courage. And if you are doing these other nine steps, you will reach step 10 and you will achieve that. And remember, power achieved.
and power received and power perceived is absolutely power achieved. So it's all about that mindset of being in that warrior mode 24 seven. It's easier said than done. But when you start to really adapt that to your life, it'll become automatic. So last but not least, and then we'll let Mr. Kev Baker get some rest. Um, I want all of you to close your eyes, take a deep breath in and exhale. And I want you to focus on whatever it is. Uh, if you're having uh, something that's bothering you here recently, or if it's something that's been going on for a while, whatever it is, focus on it. And while you're focusing on it, I'm going to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is done in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread and forgive us for our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forevermore. In Jesus' name. I want you to take another deep breath in. Exhale. And now I'm going to say this, Father, by your mighty power and your mighty and holy name in Jesus' name, I bind and break the power over Satan and all his demons, all his fallen angels, all his unclean spirits, all his demonic powers and principalities, and, and all demons that may be assigned to any of these people that are participating in this right now. All legal rights, all attachments, all curses, hexes, vexes, and spells, all ungodly soul ties, whatever it may be, by your mighty power, Father, and your mighty and holy name in Jesus' name, I bind and rebuke it and cast it out and off and away from them. Furthermore, Father, I ask for your giant warrior angels to come and take into custody every single demon curse, hex, vex, and spell, and every bit of negativity out and off and away from these people. I ask that you have your giant warrior angels carried off and deposit it back into the pits of hell where it belongs. Father, we give you the praise and the thanks and the glory for everything forevermore in Jesus' name. Now take the deepest breath in. And three, exhale and really push that out hard. And I want you to visualize God's angels coming and taking it from you. You've exhaled it. You, it has, it's like a projectile that's come out of you. And now God's giant warrior angels is taking all of it into custody and carrying it off and depositing it back into the pits of hell where it belongs. So we'll come back here next week and do this all over again. I pray that all of you have a wonderful and blessed week. And I pray that God will work through you to be a blessing to others as well. So, Kev, what can you say? This has been an amazing show. Epic. Yeah. Yeah, it truly sure. has. Derek, any final yeah. thoughts, man? I just want to give shouts out to everybody, man. Everybody that watches in the, in the you know, in the chat room, everybody that's just a basic viewer out there. We don't know who they are. They're all over the place. They're all over the world. Um, we love you all. Um, hopefully we are doing something each week um, to help you as though it as the way helps us. Uh, as individuals, and um, we just keep moving forward, man. Never give up. Warrior mode, yes. faith, strength, yes. and courage. That's all. 100%. Would yes. you reckon, Travis, give you the last word today? How's that? <laughs> I All I can do is echo what has been said throughout the night. It, uh, this was probably one of the most epic shows we've had this year. I agree. We've had, we've had some epics uh, in, in the past, you know, uh, I guess, 15 months that I've been doing this, uh, but this show was, was good. And like I said, it's just, it's always amazing to me how that when certain guests come on the show, it, everything just clicks. It falls into place. You don't, there's no guided questions. There's no leading. It's just, they open up and, and they start talking. And, and I have to say tonight was probably one of the most uh, insightful shows that we've had when it wasn't just the four of us talking amongst ourselves and, and getting inside of each other's heads and, and our psyches and things like that. It was a great show. Uh, I echo what, what Derek said, you know, it's faith, strength, and courage, uh, warrior mode. Uh, it, it has become 
uh, once again, uh, very much a, a kind of a mantra and, and a, uh, uh, a, 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 a way of, of living my life. And yeah. I'm just going to give a shout out real quickly to a show I'm going to be on Wednesday night real quickly. Uh, 8 to 8.30, I will be on Inside the Music with Tim Michaels. I will be actually in eastern Kentucky. I'm going back to my old stopping ground where I was a, yeah. a few years ago. Wow. Uh, in Prestonsburg. Uh, I've got some meetings up there, and he's invited me on his show uh, from 8 to 8.30. It, uh, we're, we're doing it live from a place called Fat Boys, which is a little uh, hamburger place. So be doing that live and uh, I'll, I'll it's it's Facebook live only and it's only live for 12 hours uh, and then it's deleted uh, he, he deletes the the feed after that so uh, I will uh, once everything gets ready I'll uh, be sending out the link to that so if everybody can sure. uh, join in Tim Michaels good friend of mine from my, my days back in eastern Kentucky he's an amazing amazingly talented musician singer songwriter been in Nashville done the Nashville scene played with almost every country singer you could possibly imagine uh, mm -hmm. and is back in eastern Kentucky working uh, WMDJ radio there in the city of Martin uh, shout out to them uh, Dale McKinney and, and Jamie Johnson the uh, three guys that that man that station on a regular basis but I'll be doing that Wednesday night we want to hear about this next Sunday. Yeah. Remind me never to let him take us out again, will you? Dear Lord. <laughs> is there no end to the shameless plug-in, Travis? <laughs> well, I figured everybody else gets to plug themselves every now and then. I don't do it. So, great plug. Derek, great plug. Derek, and I live, Derek and I should be live again Thursday night. So. Yeah. Oh, and yeah. And we'll we'll be. Yep. That, and that is the Speak Your Mind show? Yep. That is. Speak Your Mind. Para, para, uh, paramedia activity. activity. Yep. And and yep. and if Cam, if Cam will ever rebook me for his show, I'll start plugging that. But so, so far, I, I will reboot. Hey, I'll so, tell you what, I'm so having Cam, second thoughts now. So Cam, <laughs> um, Charles over at TV Free, we want to get you back on too. He mentioned you uh, last show, so we'll make that happen again. Maybe we can get. Maybe we can do a. Um, what they call the crossover shows, get the warrior mode and do a speak your mind crossover, bring you guys in on the feed. We did it before. Yeah. So yeah. that'd be nice to do it again. You that know? Work. Sounds yeah. good guys. Absolutely. Sounds good. So listen for another week and what a week it's been. Faith, strength and courage. Warrior mode, ladies and gentlemen. Remember to tell everyone about this show every Sunday right here on Bill Bean's YouTube channel. Three things, remember, it's dead easy. Faith, strength, and courage. Warrior mode.